encore. And I'm like, what? That wasn't even the encore. I'm pulling into my garage in Westchester to my apartment, and they're just finishing Patience. And they still had two or three songs. Was that right before the that. encore? No, that was, no, they that were was now the, in the encore. That was the second okay. song in the encore. Yeah. How many encore songs did they do? Like five? Four. Wow. They did yeah. Sorry, Patience, The Seeker, and Paradise City. And I mean, Jesus. And, that's, and that's for, like you said earlier before we got on the air, Travis, that's for Guns N' Roses songs. Yeah, it's, that's not, not, it, it's not like eight minutes. Right, right. Dennis Falcone this morning was complaining about November Rain being too long. He said it, the hit's only supposed to be three minutes. This <laughs> November Rain. How long is November long. Rain? It's like eight and a half yeah. minutes yeah. or something like yeah. that. But it's so yeah. fucking good, man. It is so good. Yeah, there's no filler in the song. I was ex so excited and a little, I guess a little nervous when they wheeled the piano out. Because November Rain is a, is a difficult song to perform if you're not in great shape. And, uh, I mean, they just crushed it. Axel was awesome. He was playing the piano. He was singing. Slash was fucking awesome. They were all, it was just such a good show. They all seemed happy. They seemed well, like... I yeah. wouldn't say they all seemed happy. Jim and I were noticing uh, the lack severe of. lack of chemistry. Really? Between Dude. Slash and Axel. A Slash didn't look at Axel once. Not one time in that show did Slash but look he, at Axel. I see, the, the reason why I say different is because like, he always goes up and like leans on him. Axel yeah, does. Yeah, Axel did. You don't think Sl your Slash was happy? He didn't to acknowledge no. that there was a human being next to him. No, Slash Maybe didn't. he's always like that, though. Slash never acknowledged Axel once. He doesn't seem like he looks up a lot when he plays. Like, and Slash is just kind of in his own world. And, right in the zone. And I might have been projecting a little bit, but it felt like, even with Duff, it felt like when they got to do their shit, and Axel was off stage getting oxygen or whatever. It felt like they were like, "Oh, finally, I can do my shit." I, what was he? I wonder what he was doing. He was walking off stage a lot, but I oxygen. wonder if he was That's he. What Travis said, "Yeah, uh, I mean, he's been doing that for twenty years, getting oxygen." Yeah, oh. I've been doing that for thirty-three. Good for you. Yeah, just breathing oxygen it's free, every day. Right? Yeah, it's free. So wait, he, got, he gets the oxygen, and while he's off stage. Well, yeah, I mean, he he sings his fucking lungs out. And it's not rock star shit to go on stage with an oxygen tank. No. That's lame. Yeah. I was wondering how he had that kind of... Patience. Energy. No, not patience. Oh. <laughs> no. Yeah, I mean, as far as I know, like, I know that he was doing it, like, close to 20 years ago, uh, or, or, or 15 years ago, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's still what he does, because he goes off a lot, multiple times during songs. Yeah. He'll, he'll go off stage. I was wondering what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm... I'm Almost positive, it's it's oxygen, just so that he can keep performing the way he performs because he sounds amazing. He sounds so, I couldn't believe how good he sounded. He really did for the entire show. He yeah. sounded better as the show went on. I agree with that. Yeah, and I wasn't mad at any time at how long it was going, but I did feel like okay, that's that's good. That's yeah, you were like, satisfied. There's enough. Yeah, and there are like, you know, in, in a set that's that long, close to three hours. There's there's a little there's some self indulgent moments. Yeah, you know, there's a couple things that didn't necessarily need to be done. I love Duff. I think he's a great guest. I think yeah. he's a great musician. I don't know that he needed his own song on the show. But they probably also need some uh some filler. Time for Axel for Axel to do his thing. So maybe maybe that was going on he too. He probably needs breaks. You know, I'll bet you that uh a lot of times when they do like solos and stuff like that, it's because the guy the singer needs a break for a couple of minutes to relax or whatever. And dude, if he needs a break, give him a break because, you know, at at his age and as much as he's gone through to be able to perform on the level that he performed at last night. Because he was, I mean, he was moving like the, well, I don't know, quite like the old Axel, but he was moving extraordinarily well. He didn't stop moving. He didn't talk to the audience much at all. No. He says almost nothing. Thank you. He's real, like, I'm surprised he's so quiet. Like, I, he's a front man. A front man usually talks a little bit. I can't imagine that his ability to interact with humans has improved over time. No. You know, I can't imagine that, that his interpersonal <clears throat> skills have gotten better. No, they they probably normally don't. Apparently he wasn't he like he wasn't I've heard rumor he wasn't at the show until right before he went on stage. Yeah, I know. I talked to we talked to a guy who knows his driver. He and pulled he, a Jim Norton. That's what Jim that uh, that always uh surprised me about you when I would when, a couple times I traveled with you that you wouldn't show up until it was time for you to go on so the openers like, we wouldn't be at the venue, and no. the opener and everything is already on stage. A lot of times when I time it right, I can walk in, and I have less than five minutes before I'm on stage. That's so rock star. That's yeah, rock, star rock star shit. That's cool, right? Yeah, that's real cool. That's like Axel Norton. That's, yeah. yeah. That's, that's Liberace shit. That's cool. <laughs> well, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not. But I wanted to make sure, I like to make sure I just walk in, I take a pee, and I go on. How cool was it that they, that they gave, I'm a merch guy. How cool was it that they gave two t-shirts this time? That was that's great. Cool. Yeah. 
That Jim, was really great. Jim was texting me about the t-shirts <laughs> before he got there because yeah. I got there before Jim. And I was oh, you like, couldn't get his shirts. No, because they stamp your ticket. They didn't stamp mine. Oh, no? No, because um, Zito, uh, I saw it. He's, oh. hey, he's grabbing for me. Oh, cool. yeah. They stamp my ticket. I'm not on your level yet. But, uh, uh, yeah, they get, they're, they're, they're on the house. You get a couple t-shirts, you get a poster, you get a laminate. Whew. Open bar. Whew. That was nice. Yeah. Uh, was it open bar? I yeah. didn't take advantage of it. I didn't either. I had no beverages. Did you have a couple cocktails? Uh, yeah, I did. Good uh, for you. Sirius knows how to throw a party. I was thinking yeah, that. Yeah, they as, did a great job. As I was sitting there, you know, people complain a lot. But as I was sitting there watching this show, and, like, the lobby's decked out, and, they, like I said, they have the T-shirts and the posters on your way out. They have buses to uh, after the show to bring you to different spots in the city if you want to go back to Midtown or whatever. When Sirius wants to put something together, they put on a hell of a yeah. fucking show. And you do, as much as the day-to-day -day wears you down, you do have to take a moment if you're... I mean, the problem is only 1,500 people get to go, and, and there's celebrities and subscribers. Sure, and, But for the few employees that actually get to go to a show like that you do have to take a moment and go like it's cool to work for a company where this can get pulled off oh yeah you know the fact that they got them in that venue yeah is, is amazing i'm surprised guns are always used an opening band they didn't need an opening band for that show the kills yeah they were good but they didn't need that uh, maybe actually doesn't like to go on before 10 like that's obviously a timing thing with him who went to the did, you went to the metallica show didn't they didn't use an opener no, did no. they neither yeah. did mccartney neither did springsteen no. Yeah, you just go on. You yeah. didn't need an opening band there. Maybe it's tougher because they're not starting early, so maybe it's tougher to start at ten thirty without an opening band. Yeah, yeah, right? they should have started at eight. It's probably for the crowd. Like Sam just said, they don't want to go on at eight. Axel right. likes going on late. I'm surprised. Like, why? It's just the way he's always been. He likes playing late. He's a bit of a night owl. Yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe he sleeps till five p.m. Who the fuck knows? Probably does. Probably sleeps so having all an day. opening band is good for the crowd. Right. Because now you're not sitting there for four hours. You're, you know, at least 30 to 40 minutes of that. Well, you're, oh, yeah, Appetite for Destruction was uh, 87, right? Yeah, 30, yeah, 30, years, 30 today. years. 30 years today. That was wow. the only thing that uh, struck me as odd, that they didn't make a huge... I figured that all. it was so late that after midnight they would probably say something. Because today is technically the 30-year anniversary of Appetite. Yes. So you would think that after midnight they'd be like, there it is, we're here for the 30-year. And, you know, they didn't do anything specific except be awesome and be Guns N' Roses. They didn't even play any songs off that episode. Not one. No. No. Did they all go to the jungle? I don't remember. No. No. Oh. No. They did not. It was all B-sides from Chinese Democracy. Yeah, I mean, that's their best album. How many songs off that did they do? They did, they did Chinese Democracy. They did a, Chinese a Democracy. Couple. They did Better. Uh, I think they did a few. I think they did one or two more. It's not a great record, but no. there's some good songs on it. I but think that's not none of the guys, but Axel, song. though. Right. But, you know, they learned the songs, and they, and they play them when Axel wants to play them. I right. guess. Yeah, I mean, right. that's, that's what it is. Axel, like, that, I guarantee, was part of the deal. Like, look, I, I want to play these songs as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was, but so it's like, you just got to do what you... That's, the, like, uh, it's so weird the way some musicians are with their set list. Like, Jack White... That's probably why Meg White left the band and, and had to quit because Jack White wouldn't work with a set list. He would just make it up on stage and Meg would have to follow him. So like he'd just start playing something and Meg would just have to know the entire catalog and be ready to do any song at any time. Yeah, Pearl Jam's kind of like that. Like they, they do have a set list planned out ahead of time, but there's always at least one or two scratches and substitutions that Eddie just does on the fly. Eddie makes the call. Yes. 100%. Does Eddie play guitar? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, not all the time, but he plays guitar on some songs. Because that's what. Because if you're just a vocalist, you can't just start singing a song, right? So wait, Meg White or just let. He? Were they still together when she left the band? Jack and Meg White. Yeah. You mean together? Were they a couple? They were. No, they've been. I mean, they've been. Yeah, they've been no, divorced. Brother and sister. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah, they're still, and they're still brother and sister. They've been divorced IRL. Oh. Um, way before. Uh, Way before they got famous. Speaking Maybe that's why she left the band. Speaking of Jack White, do you know who the singer of The Kills? Yeah, we were talking about that. She's in The Dead Weather, right? Yeah. Yeah. She was I, awesome. She was, she was awesome. They were good. She's so hot. Yeah. I think she was standing behind us halfway through the show. She, she might have. Stage. Not when she was. No, I wonder if she was. Not too. when she was performing. Yeah, she might have, too. I we, think I think she was standing behind us. Dre DiMatteo was in the row right in front of us to the right. Holy fuck, did she look good. She has a great bob. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, is she sexy? There were a lot, there were more celebrities there than there were at the Metallica. Concert. I only saw her. 
where there's Dre DiMatteo. I mean, there was Jason Biggs as a celebrity. Jason Biggs and Jenny Mullen. I didn't see them. He fucked a pie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't see him. <laughs> um, Sofia Vergara was there. Was she? She was towards the front. She had better seats than us, which um, is bullshit. Yeah. Uh, Joe Maganiello, Sofia Vergara's husband, who's a big actor. Okay, I didn't see him. Um, John McEnroe was there. I didn't see him. Where was he? He was. He had better seats than us, too, that's which is bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, that's Tony Hawk up. was there. Tony Hawk was there. I don't know yeah. what Tony Hawk looked like. Tony What's Hawk there? had better seats than us, which is horse shit. Um, well, he's got good video games. I mean, had. You know, yeah. Yeah, could true. you still put in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater and do a couple ollies, though? I mean, I would if I had a system that played it. Sure, yeah, yeah definitely. Hook that PS One up. Yeah, that was a great game. Um, Hard Rock Johnny was there. Celebrities. Well, yeah, you're a little off the Eddie Trunk. We know Eddie. Yeah, Don we, Jameson. Right now we're starting to now we're starting to stretch. I mean, Jim and me were there. You know, that's Ron yeah. Bennington was there. We got to sit right across the aisle oh, from Ron and Gail. Yes, Ron and Gail. Yeah, sat very close. Yeah. I wonder if they did that so there was no inter-show rivalry, inter interpromotional rivalry. I think there was. That, that so like they no neither Ron and Gail nor Jim and Sam could be like, hey, why do they have better seats than us? Yeah, because yeah. we were we were in the same row, separated by an aisle. But technically, they were in the center section, and we were in the left section. Oh, you're in the left section. So their seats were better. Oh. Yeah, because they were more towards the center. Right? Where were you, Travis? When I say dead center, Troy and I were dead center. Of the, of of the poor person seats. No 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 no. no, 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 no. Oh. Second row, lower balcony. Okay, so there's two balconies. Yes, there's a lower and a middle. Oh, second row, right in the center of the uh, of of the theater. I didn't know there was two balconies. I thought there was only one. Like the rows are fourteen seats. We were seats seven and eight. Yeah, I mean, I saw you. I saw the photos you guys posted on the gram. They were good. Yeah, they were really good. They looked the the photos looked amazing. <laughs> Axel didn't do a, lot of, they didn't do a lot of uh, photos. What do you mean? They didn't do any, they didn't, they did any photos. They yeah. did no photos. There was, well, yeah, there was no meet and greet because Axel got there five minutes before he went on stage. I, yeah, I wonder if that's what the problem with the meet and greet was. He won't get there early. Yeah. Well, look. They could have done it after, but then the band is like, no, we don't want, probably want to do it after. Well, who's going to want it at 2 o'clock in the morning? Fans would. I guess. For a photo with those three, I would have stayed. I would have stayed, too. Who am I kidding? Fucking kidding me for Axel slash and Duff. Yeah. I would have stayed for that. I would have been told the other guys to get out of the photo, though. Yeah, me too. Just, just the three things. Yeah. You guys can go to bed. It's all good. There were people outside offering hundreds of dollars for tickets. Really? Yeah. yeah. I saw somebody on Craigslist trying to sell one for a thousand. I don't know if he got any biters, but uh, he might. I mean, for that, that's a fucking rare ticket to see them such a small yeah. venue. Yeah. Maybe I should have sold my ticket. No, because then you'd be faking it today. Yeah. Pretending. I'd be like, yeah. Great guys, huh? So what else did you guys think? What else? Yeah, Me I mean, you too. Just, you could have just listened to the show and been like, yeah, that was great. That's true, yeah. Yeah, and the great thing is it looked as good as it sounded. Right, guys? You guys expand on that. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, take it. Yeah, yeah. Jim, oh, take man. It from here. But then I didn't go either. Oh, they sang like a lark. <laughs> I could not believe how good Axl Rose sounded. I yeah. could not fucking believe it, man. His voice has really held up. Was God there? damn, and that's not an easy voice to hold no. up. No, not he, at all. He's not, a, he's not like a fucking boo -boo 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 crooner. He was belting those songs out exactly like they're recorded. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And, I, and there were moments, I mean, you know, every, all, there are lots of songs where there are those moments where you're like, okay, what's Axel going to do to substitute his voice on that? You know those tricks where you drop an octave early so that you don't have to hit the high note yeah. later? Like, I, I kept looking for like, okay, what's Axel going to do so he doesn't have to do this or that? No tricks. Yeah. No tricks. He actually was hitting those, like, Didn't give notes. it to the crowd. No, exactly. <laughs> he did a couple times, but it wasn't because he couldn't hit the notes. He was, it seemed like he that was just doing the way he was doing a couple of the songs, yeah. but it didn't seem like it was the cheating thing. He held that long note in Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could be mine. Nailed that Yeah, note. yeah. That's the one that I was, that's yeah. the one that I was, like, that, that I was watching going, what's, he, what's, what's his trick here? What's he going to do so he doesn't have to... Yeah, I mean, the band, the whole, entire band just sounds so tight. They sounded yeah. great. Yeah. I, I really wish I would have seen Paradise City. I, I mean, I hate it, but I knew. I'm, gl I'm glad I left when I did. I was probably in bed when I played that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube or something. I woke up this morning. I, I fucking felt like I was on heroin. How come? Just because I'm not used to going to bed that late. I'm not used to getting home one thirty. I was in bed by 2. That's what heroin feels like? Just sluggish. Yeah. Why do people do heroin? Then, it then, sucks then, waking up on no sleep. It's terrible. That's what heroin feels like? Makes you tired, makes you vomit, makes you tired. Nobody should do heroin. No, I know. That's the word dumb. has gotten out there. I'm surprised anyone who will, uh, you know. There are other drugs that make you feel real good. Um, yeah, but heroin really apparently makes you feel good after it makes you vomit. 
Oh, after. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then all you, right. So you put it. All right. So maybe maybe try it. You have to throw up. And, what yeah. a, and a weird day yesterday, too. Uh, the singer from, what was his name, from Lincoln Park? Lincoln Park. Chester Bennington. Hangs himself. Um, that same was, as Cornell. Yeah, that was a shocker. And on Cornell's birthday, people are wondering if there's a connection because Chester was friends with Chris Cornell, I guess. Um, you know, I wasn't a Lincoln Park fan. I kind of thought they sucked. But they were. That first record, dude. It was huge. Like, I, I won't listen to it now. No. But when it came out. Yes. That record was amazing. Yeah, was yes. Good. Yes. Well, they were, they were like, they actually, to me, were one of, if not the only band, unless you consider Rage rock rap, which I don't, but Linkin Park added credibility to rock rap as the genre was like shifting into, this is embarrassing. They were polished rock rap. Yeah. But it wasn't like- Well, you don't think, what's his name? Fred Durst oh. added- uh... Oh, I thought that was just a given. <laughs> yeah, at one point they did. But when you look back, like, Linkin Park, even people would think that they were like, yeah, Linkin Park sucks, they're not my band. They were never like, ugh, Linkin Park. They they weren't that sort of douche band. That, like, if, if a person said that they liked Linkin Park today, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 what's what's Fred Durst's band? Limp Bizkit. Yeah. If a person said they liked Limp Bizkit today, it'd be like, what? Yeah. What the fuck are you yeah. talking about? But if they said they like Linkin Park today, it's like, okay, yeah. Oh, yeah right, and they're okay. still putting out new music, and it's like, yeah, I, I, I get that. My my old agent handled those guys for many years. Yeah. Uh, Pete, yeah. So he's probably, I'm sure he knew this guy pretty well. I, I don't think we ever interviewed him. No, I don't I don't remember it. But he was, yeah, they, they were they were really, really good at what they did, and he was good. I wasn't a fan of the band, but I mean, it's, no, I mean, it's, it's a shame. I remember he, for a little bit, sang with Stone Temple Pilots when Scott yes. Weiland left. Yes, he did, and people had good reviews about it. Yeah. People were, people were happy about it. Um, and some people, like on Twitter, I was reading, there were people who had no clue. I guess because it's a generational thing, they had no clue about anything Lincoln Park ever did. But the Stone Temple Pilot stuff that Chester did, they were aware of, and uh, and and he did really well. He was very talented. Yeah, super talented. What is it with these guys hanging themselves too, man? I don't know, man. It I has... wonder if he did it the same way Robin Williams did it the same way. I think Cornell did it where they're kind yeah, of yeah on the doorknob. Yeah, because this way, these are guys. This way, you can back out if you want to. You know what I mean? Like, if you're standing or kneeling. Like you said, uh, when it, when the Cornell thing first happened, it's like that sort of, I want to see, like, you're just in this dark place where you want to see what it feels like. You've you, been through that scenario many times. You've done that many times. Yeah. You've, you've, you've stood up every other time. This is just the only time you just didn't stand up. Right. Right. I didn't know he had a history of depression, either one of those guys. I, I mean, I don't know much about either band. What's also like to hear that a, a rock front man struggles with depression is not like, oh my God, if only we had known. All, yeah. Every rock front man. They're all nuts. Any rock front man that doesn't struggle with depression is a phony and is uninteresting. Or there's something wrong with them. There, There is something wrong with them. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's right. They're all fucked up on some level. Yeah. You got to be a flake to be a lead singer. Yeah, you do. But people were surprised by this because it's not like, you know, look, Linkin Park were not the Linkin Park of old, but they were also still... In that, as relevant as a band could be in that genre, they were still a relevant rock band. You they know, still played huge venues. Yes, and they still put out. They just put out a new record. Like they still put out new new music, and every now and then they would come up with something that got top forty airplay. Yeah, I mean, like I heard about them for years, and they were, they still seemed relevant. Again, I just I didn't listen to them even when they when they came out like ninety in the late nineties. Uh, early to eight, ninety nine. Yeah, late nineties, but yeah. yeah, early. They were, they were. I associate them with the early two thousands. They were a big. We did interview them once, I think, on the red carpet, the MTV Music Awards when we went with Opie and Anthony. This is when Mick Jagger came over and stupid lady, uh, Di and Marion <laughs> chased them away. They really, hey, Mick, Mick, hey, Mick, hey, Mick, and he fucking just walked away. They really had that ability, didn't they? Yeah, just chase, but just scare people off. He, uh. uh Linkin Park, you know, they were huge on their own, and then they put out the uh, the Jay Z mashup uh, LP that they did. I sucked. Yeah, you know, I I, would, I don't remember that. I would. It was when mashups were just starting to be a thing, and and they were it sold a ton, and like people were super. It was huge. The single was big, but it was also. I mean, they were just really smart to jump on that thing together and just put something out. But I found my because I don't like Linkin Park. I found myself like listening to the Jay Z parts and being like. All right, but let's get back to the Jay-Z part. And they've been playing it now since he passed. 
and I've been listening to it, I'm like, this is awful. Well, to today's standards, right? Because the the technology and what is conceptual to do has changed so much, yes, right? Yes, yes. Like, the, by the, the electro, that passed as electronic music technically then yeah. because you were mashing two things up, but it wasn't really taking advantage of what you can do with electronic music. Right. Right? Right. Yeah, I think that's the thing. Like, when, when, when you're doing something that at the time part of the popularity is the technology behind it, like, oh, this has just yeah. never been done before, it, it may not. It has a shelf life. Yeah, exactly. Uh, some Bill from Yonkers is saying, uh, well, let Bill say, because I didn't know this. So yeah, there might be a tie-in, yes. Uh, hello? Hey, how are you guys? Okay. Um, Bennington sang at Chris Cornell's funeral and was also a godfather to one of his children. So they were obviously very close. Yeah. He yeah. sang a uh, hallelujah. All right, thanks, buddy. Did he sing like at a black church? Like, hallelujah! No, 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 not oh. like that. The song. Oh, I thought he just no, sang Leonard the Cohen's song. Oh, 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 that's a good song, too. Um, but why would you do it the same way your friend did it a couple months later? That's really... Especially, like, dude, you have, you have, he's got six kids. He yeah. was super fucked up, though. Like, yeah, well, so is Cornell. Cornell yeah, yeah, yeah. had kids, too. It's Lots like, you guys, you have kids, you gotta fucking Yeah, but I think, he was, I think he was a little more fucked up. Like, he's talked in the past about how he was, like, molested at, like, seven. Yeah, I've heard that, uh, too. And that really, really, really fucked him up and kept fucking him up. That bums people out. Yeah, he was a super alcoholic. He had lots of substance abuse problems. I think, I think he was in a worse place continuously than Chris Cornell was. Well, he was also bummed out because he had to announce to his audience that his name wasn't Chaz. It was Chester. Ow. And he never, I mean, that's not cool. Why would they call him Chaz? No, that was just... Did he play D&D? <laughs> yes. <laughs> From oh. the movie Airheads. The lead singer of the band, Chaz, has to stand up. He's like, my name's not Chaz. It's Chester. But then he gets support. That works cause, out. Because he was a nerd in high school. And then, you oh. know, the rock fans were also, I play D&D too. Stuttering John said he <laughs> masturbated. Right. I used to masturbate. Constantly. Constantly. I, I never saw that. Airheads it's is a great a movie. movie. It's a great movie. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's... It's hard to believe that a guy with six kids, an ex-wife, and a current wife, he's not a failure at his craft. It's hard to say that he's a failure in his personal life if he's married. You know, if he bounced back from his failed marriage to a successful marriage and has six kids, like, it's hard to say he's a failure there. Even if you're bad in your personal life, when you still have six kids, that's a fucking... That's, yeah, I mean, that's a big deal to hang yourself. You have to have... Uh, dude, depression is just so yeah, that's, dark. That, that's what it is. So dark. Where it just you don't even care about anything other than I just don't want to be here. Yeah, right it, now. Do, it doesn't make it. There's no logic to it. Right? Yeah, I don't think we can understand the the logic that's in their heads. That's why I don't like. Know? That's why I don't like people being like, "Oh, he probably did it because he was sad about Chris Cornell dying." It's like no, it's like the, the severity of the mental illness of depression that he was dealing with had to be insane because. Well, it's also you don't you feel like people will be better off without you. Like, you feel like, oh, my yeah. God, it won't matter. I'm not hurting them by doing this. I'm a worthless fucking disaster. They will be much. And you start to think nobody will grieve you. It's like they're, they're not even going to care. So what am I doing? It's a whole stupid thing. I get, get that mentally, but it's you still with kids. Up, you're like, Chester, dude, you were at Chris Cornell's funeral. Hella people grieved him. Hella people are going to grieve you too, dude. Yeah. Or whatever comes next is better than what's right here. Right. Every girl I've ever dated oh, you has mean said like, that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you mean in the the afterlife or it, whatever that whatever is. Whatever it is. If there's an afterlife, if it's nothing, it, it's going to be better than what's going on right the now. The afterlife is the only escape to this hell. Yeah, and I, that I'm that, I mean, I totally get it. I mean, it's just it's just a dark, dark place. Yeah. Yeah, well, and, and people don't understand it because people who are not famous, like, you know, like, I guess like Jim and me, for instance. Yeah. Like the like you guys, oh, guys who aren't famous like us. I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Oh, like oh, oh. like yeah. Jim and I would be the example. Like I'm sure there's people listening at home going gotcha. like, oh, what what must it be like to live a day a fabulous day in the life of Jim Norton or Sam at Roberts, home, I mean, bigger I, I celebrities? Just, I yeah, we we kind of do get to really live the life. Yeah, and I get where people would think that, but yeah, I mean you're in a place yeah where you could take cabs for uh, two blocks if you want to. Sure, it was nothing to me. Yeah. Yeah, that's called the ride of the coward. <laughs> you took the ride called? of the coward, yeah. <laughs> but, like, I think part of it, too, and it, it's 100% depression, but people think that if they get famous or successful or they sell a million records or whatever it is, or are looked at, I mean, they were looked at as the best at what they do. Yeah. In terms of that genre of music, they're the only ones left. Like, they escaped that era, and they're not Smash Mouth, 
and they're not Limp Biscuit, and they're not these bands that, you know, sorry, it's embarrassing. No, they were still very successful. They were still very successful, yeah. and it's not... They held a fan base. And it, they're not embarrassing. Linkin Park is not an embarrassing band, right? Yeah. So people, like, work and work and work to get there, especially people I b- probably who are struggling with what he was struggling with, thinking, like, oh, if I can just be successful at music, if I can just sell out this this venue, if I can just sell this many records, I'll be better. Yeah. I'll be fine. And then you get it done. You accomplish the goals. And you sit in your hotel room and you feel exactly the same. Like that has to do really, really dark things to you. That, that's where I think when you do these amazing things that everybody in the world would be envious of. Yes. And you're sitting alone and you don't feel any differently. And you're not getting a high from it anymore. And you're just not, it's just not happening. That I think is when you start to get to the point where you're like, there's no escape. Yeah, you did. I felt that way before. I've gone through that misery again. I don't have kids, but where you literally think that I, that I have the only the only reason you don't do it is has nothing to do with people. It's because those you're are, scared of the process of doing it. Yes, you're but those are also of, specifically related to your crowd sizes. Like I would also be depressed if I looked out in the audience and saw just a smattering of people there. That's a good point. It, it really, it, it really is while I'm justified. talking to it, it is it's while I'm talking to strangers. <laughs> I say that usually as I'm saying thank you guys for coming. I'm like, wow, that beam would support me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not. It, it's something that you do not. Um, just looking at your comedian stool, and you're like, I could sit on it, but what if I, what if I stand on it and just put this lasso around that around the ceiling right there. What is that light fixture? Yeah, they think it's part of the show. They wouldn't interrupt what I'm doing. I need an audience volunteer. Who wants to come kick out the stool, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, All right, I need less volunteers. Because <laughs> I imagine there'd be quite a long line. Oh, yeah. That's what they come for. Oh, my God. Yeah, you do get that. and It's, it's such a crazy, irrational thing. And nothing... It's, it's almost like you can feel it starting. It's a weird thing. Like, when you go through something and you try to catch yourself, like... Don't go down this road. Like, you'll get a negative thought. Like, something bad will happen that confirms, okay, I'm worthless. Yeah. Like, you know, you audition for something, you don't get it. Or whatever the fuck it is in someone's life. And then it happens, and you're like, don't go off this cliff. And then you start to spiral, and you start to see evidence of it in everything. Yes. And you spiral, and you're like, it's, it's never going to get better. And then you can really put yourself in a pit very fast. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're getting high, and you're fucking, you know what I mean? And you're just sitting there in a bottle. Like, it, it, terrible. Well, it's, it's really easy for your brain to trick you into going down that path like you have to actively and consciously fight to create a perspective that's positive like that's not a natural thing and like especially if you if you're smart like you know i i think if you're a person with a certain level of intelligence you see things clearly enough to not lie to yourself into just thinking that everything is good and everything you do is great like that I, I think that being self-critical is something that smarter people tend to do. And when I see somebody who's like doing well and they're just super happy about everything, I think they're either lying or stupid. Yeah, like that's I, that's what I think of them. But I, I think you're right. And but yeah. you also go this the, the other way though is by lying to yourself and saying that everything is bad uh, and lying to yourself and that everything is uh, is is terrible. Right. Right. So that that's also very bad. And uh, sometimes everything is not as terrible as we think it is. No. Sometimes where we thought there there was no light at the end of the tunnel, there appears a shining yes. light. You know what I mean? Sometimes we think when we're faced with the impossible, it all of a sudden becomes possible. It, it, it Have does. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, I figured you'd want that one. Whichever one you want. That, I figured you'd want that one, but I could be wrong. Am I wrong? I might be wrong. I so, don't. Sometimes the things you never thought would happen... All of a sudden, just kind of happened. So uh, you, you weren't at the Guns N' Roses show last night. How come? He's not talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy! Oh, my God! Finally! Sam Roberts! Look who's here! Travis! Troy! My God! Oh, my God! The survivors. I, we, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> we, uh... I, that's why I've been so quiet this first part of the break yes. because we knew we had. I got Scott came up to me last night, I, I, or I saw I saw Andrew Moss last night, and he goes, uh, he goes, Rolling oh, Stones uh, don't gather <laughs> him. Fuck yeah! Oh my god! <laughs> Fuck yeah! They don't. Oh, oh boy, are people going to be disappointed in this reunion? <laughs> <laughs> this is not what we were expecting. No, it's not. <laughs> 
But if it couldn't have worked out better, it's oh. going to be two hours and 40 minutes of chip. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. Oh. So we got the approval. I, I found yeah. out last night at the show from Andrew. And then I saw Scott, and he goes, okay, Anthony can come in. That's uh, awesome. I, the yeah. first thing I did, I literally got the approval. I didn't check security. I just texted Ant, come to our, like I was like a fucking, like you're the girl who's finally going to fuck me, so I'm driving <laughs> over at midnight. And it's just amazing how things change, because right after that, you know, uh, Scott came over to me while you were in the bathroom, and he goes, we good? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, Anthony tomorrow, Kumia tomorrow? <laughs> I was like, yep. And he yep. goes, great. Great. Yeah. Good. He was psyched. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And so Very security cool. Three years been, in the waiting. <laughs> it, it's been a bit, uh, yeah, we wanted you just to start talking to start the show. Yeah, yeah. But security hadn't been told yet, and that's what this whole 45-minute holdup was, was. We just had to get Scott. No we'll, signal had been sent. <laughs> <laughs> No shock jock was permitted in. <laughs> oh, yeah, security at the desk in the front, uh, they're pretty good. They are. They Because uh, Keith came with me, of course, Keith uh, Maresca. And, uh, like, they give him the pass, and then they're typing out. They got my ID, and he's like, oh, we're going to need a supervisor. Oh, I'm like, oh, yeah. those computers, they get you every time. They keep records, don't they? They do keep records. I thought it was just going to be like if the wanted poster's still on the wall. There's a problem, but it wasn't, so I thought it would be okay. <laughs> Do you know what I thought of doing? I, I thought this occurred to me on the way in today. I thought, like, maybe Travis... Shooting should... yourself? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> that occurred to me when I got the yes. <laughs> I thought maybe we should put Anthony Cunha with an oh N. Oh, my God. I, and then that way they'd see the name. They'd be they like, would, oh, misspelling. It would, it I wouldn't... thought of that. Can we make it a little cooler in here, Troy? I, I turned the heat on when I came yeah. in. Oh, well, when I walked in... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah so uh we were down there for a little while getting the security thing taken care of and then uh we got the word and and i uh took the elevator up with roland yeah and uh yeah we got to t speak with uh roland a little so bit what's your what's your uh <laughs> wow <laughs> <laughs> holy shit there is some Oof. yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh. A little chat with Roland, did you? Oh, Catching up. Boy. And uh, what's his name? Long, Paul, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Roland and Paul. Paul came down to get you? No, Paul came down to nonstop tell me how shitty everything was <laughs> for so long. <laughs> it was fantastic. He really, oh, just venting. Did Paul let it all out? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, I haven't even made it past security. No, yet. I'm in the... I'm in the lobby, yeah, and this is already... I'm not upstairs. Oh, my God. And Roland just, you know... <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Roland's yeah. a good small talker because he always has to hang out with people outside. Yeah. So when Roland is, like, in, a, in an awkward moment, he just kind of spills his guts. That's <laughs> <laughs> a lot of guts. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, uh, that was great. It was great. So, so, so it took you an elevator ride and a trip in the lobby. Are you... Do you feel like you're fully acclimated back here? You've now got... Just more gossip than you know what to oh, do yeah, with. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got all the gossip. I'm up to speed. Yeah. Uh, I'm sitting, uh, you know, pretty much where I, I used to sit. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in. We got were... a lot of work being done up here, though. Yeah. You see that? Like, there's nobody back there. Ah, <laughs> look at that. We should, we should uh, of course, <laughs> I see all friendly faces. Everybody wants to say hi. <laughs> yeah, everyone wants to say hi. Yeah. How you doing? How are you, How's everything? There he is. Dennis Falcone. Getting, Danny, getting nice to see weirdly Danny close. Oh, Danny, Danny, and, very weirdly and close. And not sure if he should hug or hand. Yeah, I didn't know what I should do yeah. there. Danny didn't know what to do. Every once in a while, his auto autism will realize rear his ugly head. <laughs> yeah. Every once in a while, 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. You know, uh, just the other day on uh, my program, I was uh, I had uh, uh, a shirt that I had to change, uh -huh. and the only one was a Dennis Falcone shirt. <laughs> I so I that. wore that. Your house burned that. down? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was, uh, and your face, just uh, right wow. there on the shirt. I, I it's that. the same that thing really Chester nice. Bennington was wearing. Too <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> soon. Oh, that's sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh, my gosh. God. Yeah, Lincoln Park guy, right? So what, what oh, that's terrible. What do you think of the new studio? You yeah, you haven't here. seen it. It was a different color. I mean, they, I, it is really, I find, insulting that, you know, you, you are one of the guys that helped make this studio into Absolutely. something important and not only do they throw you out <laughs> they do construction so that your position no longer it exists. no longer <laughs> even exists yeah yes it's uh it, there's no way uh anybody could sit there no. well i kind of i, I kind of like that yeah and they yeah. keep yeah. changing the sanitas in here 
you know, the logos on the wall. Well, Sanitiz. yeah, yeah. No Sanitiz. one knows what that means. I don't what know what that you could have just said. Well, the logos. What's he say? Sanitez, I'm going to bring you gifts. <laughs> <laughs> Home Friend. run, Chipper. Thanks a lot, then. <laughs> Home run. <laughs> Yeah, wallpaper, uh, right now, Paneling? I don't know what that so, is. Yeah. Logos on the wall would have worked. But yeah. you like that they uh, they hung your jersey up. I like that up in the rafters. Right, right. They raised that uh, that the old T-shirt up uh, into the rafters. I'm very happy about that. Now, when you see like when you're on the outside, because I remember like when you first got fired, you were watching the construction happening, and it almost felt like because I would watch your show, and yeah. it felt like you were like it looked like it was such great stuff because you weren't here yeah. now that you're in the room yet nothing's been done no it it's looks the same, the same. L- literally paint on the wall yeah and a different uh console that's right for the most part but l- just color wise really and the rugs yeah. Do you recognize the rugs being different or no? No, really? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> no. I noticed nothing. Oh. Right. Travis is behind the glass still. Yeah. So just, uh, he's laying under it. <laughs> <laughs> Sitting on top of it. <laughs> uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's familiar. And I see Jim Norton back behind the board. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it is a weird thing. But it, yep. it's, it's funny because I'm so used to seeing Anthony on my left. Uh, which you, no one's ever said that before. Uh, no, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, but usually I sit where, where, where Denny is and Anthony would be on my left. So seeing you uh, crawl. But yeah, it's not yeah. even that odd, I guess, because I've seen you so many times on the uh, in the Chip podcast. Yes. Looking at each other across, it becomes and more forth. normal. And if it's easy for you to go over there, you just had to turn the stool over. <laughs> 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 See, because... I like it, my hiney. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what he meant, Sam? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Denny. Yeah, no, I knew. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Denny. What happened? They ripped all your stuff out over there, Dennis Falcone. Yeah. Where, oh, uh, where are you based? Wait till you hear this. Tell, tell, tell him, Denny. Tell him he don't sit in a cubicle anymore. Mm-mm-mm. No, he That's kneels in one. Rock- <laughs> <laughs> I'm in an office now. It wasn't rock and roll enough? <laughs> you got an office? I got an well, office. Uh, is it two well, officers it's just less Nesman tape? <laughs> <laughs> There's two other people in there. Yeah, so oh. It's a third of an office. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Well, I still have a, you know, a door. That's right. Even though it's a glass door. That's right. You know, so. oh, did, did you put up uh, you know, pictures of family and friends and a rock and roll memorabilia? I have some pictures in there. Yeah? yeah I have some things. Any prize possession? I have a, you uh, and Keith Moon or something? <laughs> no, I have a picture of uh, Sonny Bono with me. Oh, oh, oh I, wish had fucking, I, wish had, uh, I wish you had an appointment on the slope with him. <laughs> I couldn't get that one out fast enough. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted you to die skiing. That's yeah, right. of course. Right. Right. I got that. Of, of course. Yeah, right. Well, a prize possession. I have possession. some old uh, Opie and Anthony Bumper stickers. What? T-shirts. Oh, yeah, I have I've a bunch seen of stuff too. Pop up. Yeah, I have weird like old O and A fucking uh, like these giant banner. I'm like, I'm not gonna do anything. The women, the cartoon characters. When you yeah, guys like yeah. the animated things. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> we. Uh, I, I guess the other day they were cleaning up and found a bunch of stuff in Iraq. Sent oh, some stuff over. The, to- the Nagel was cleaning up and he was trying to give it away on his. Uh, on his on his on his radio show account, yeah. like it was like pri- you the the office stuff for your radio show was prizes on his radio show. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, that's and then, bad. And then he got caught, and so then he sent stuff to you. I think that's how it worked out. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Uh, I, I I didn't even want it. Like <laughs> of like not. I'm not a guy that's like oh I I need that memorabilia or you know. Any of that shit. I'm 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 the move on guy. Yeah, you certainly <laughs> are. <laughs> move the fuck on. Oh, I saw Ant the day after. I remember. I, I want to say it was the day after you got fired. It was like the July Fourth party of 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, dude, are you alright? I thought it was, we were. It was. It was you. There was like a hundred people at your house. And you're like, ah, I'm gonna do it for my house. And like, you were fine. Yeah, like, that you, was you, it. You recover it was just immediately. Like, uh, yeah, you know, you had to just kind of move on yeah. after that. I was pretty uh, disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> that I got the boot. It was a, it's a fun gig. I mean, coming in here and sitting with the likes of James Norton. Yeah, yeah. And just laughing our asses off on a daily basis was uh, was a great gig. Yeah, you and don't have to, uh, you don't have to build shit. You just come yeah. in. You laugh with your buddy, and That's you go it. home, and, and you, you get go money. Home. I'm not on a roof. I'm, <laughs> right. not, I'm not swinging a hammer. Right. Uh, and then, you, you know, that goes away, and you're kind of like, oh, shit. Now were what? You, <laughs> were you scared or, uh, or just kind of bummed? Bummed, mostly. Yeah. Uh, but then when we, me and Keith started building up the whole compound thing, uh, 
it was it was scary because there's so much. Like for years, all I did was show up, right? And sometimes I didn't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was one of those things where it was like, ah, oh, fuck, you know, this is now I got to deal with certain things, and uh, I'm not You're used the boss. to it. Yeah, at the place, so to speak. Yeah. If it wasn't for fucking Maresca, though, you know, he's the enforcer. Because I'm kind of, I'm the guy that's like, okay, right. all right, whatever. And uh, did that for 20 years. And uh, <laughs> it, it was, uh, and Keith is the guy that'll get on the phone and be like, hey, prick, fucking, something isn't working. Get yeah. to, well, we're fixing that. No, fix it. Yeah. Like, I need that. Kind of an enforcer kind of a guy. So uh, between the two of us, over the course of the years, we really built something uh, pretty cool. So It really is cool. Especially, yeah. Especially, like, when you look at it now, it's only been three years. Yeah, and it's yeah. like an entire network with a bunch of shows and it's got like you got a, a legit beautiful space in the city yeah that, in like, the city it's like it started out yeah me and keith in my basement yeah and three years later it's really you know it's, it's a, a legitimate studio, thing legit. it's, really it's cool. just uh it's very cool we got a lot of things happening too in uh in the fall some big big announcements to be yeah. made oh Is that boy right? yeah yeah do we get any hints gonna be um Pretty insane. So, oh. but I don't. I you know I don't want. To, oh, Keith, Keith, oh, Keith. Now look, see, see what I told you. Right. J J hang on, Keith. Jim is not the quickest on the board. Oh, oh. please, he's all potted up. Oh. <laughs> potted and up. The whole gang's potted up. Usually, Jim has to count out loud when he's turning on the microphone. Right. Yeah. I do. <laughs> now, now remember. Yeah. You did sign a non-disclosure before I did. you I, came in today. Keith made me sign a non-disclosure agreement for your own for my own company. Good. Yeah. Now it's going to be like, oh, he's got to sign a non-disclosure. <laughs> no, no, no. No. But yeah, uh, coming the end of August, we're going to make an announcement. We do have a co-host for Anthony Cumia. What? Yeah. Contract is signed. Okay, what? cool. Yeah. And, uh, yep. yep. That's going to be the big announcement. It'll be One uh, of them. August 21st we're going to announce it. And yeah. now, August 21st. Denny, you don't want to just admit it now? No, no, you're the guy. The, the Anthony lawyers. and Denny show. And you know how long we had to argue over whether it was going to be the Denny and Anthony show? The Denny and Anthony actually sounds better. He's like, Denny no, and it Anthony. sounds more like Opie and Anthony. Denny and Anthony. There's a Y in the Anthony. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. <laughs> we're, we're only announcing it August 21st because he actually doesn't get paroled until I think October. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah. August 21st, the announcement. Well, let me ask this. Has this person... Does he currently or has he ever worked at or for Sirius XM? Currently. Has or has. He might have. That's good. He's been in the building. That's good answer. Okay, all right. That's oh, something. Oh, wow. That's something. Yeah. yeah. He's been in yeah. the building. Okay, that yeah, that could right. be a lot of people. Well, yeah, OJ. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, he would be a great uh, co-host. He sure would. You'd have a lot to relate to. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh. Let me give you some pointers, Anthony. I'll tell you where you slipped up. <laughs> OJ and Anthony and their conflict-free lives. Yes, conflict-free. <laughs> Did you watch the... Uh, his no, I, I, I forgot about it. I was doing so. I think I think I was in the gym actually, but I, I saw it on Drudge when I came back. I totally nice slipping that in, by the way. I think well, I was at the gym. Yeah. I think I was getting a pump on. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, incorrect. Well, I was okay. cruising in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I forget what I, I actually forgot that he was doing that. Oh, really? Yeah, I, 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 I slipped my mind. I went right back into 1994, baby. I was locked Didn't in. Didn't it I, feel like that again? Was I it live? They were showing the video. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I never thought they could even do that like i thought a parole hearing because you, you'd never see anybody's parole hearing on mm -mm. television no one cares but oj is just fantastic so uh seeing him sitting there and talking uh, it was it brought me right back by the way the old days especially what a disaster the oj trial was being televised to the entire justice system yeah you would think they would not televise <laughs> anything <laughs> else oj does in a courtroom <laughs> right but they they just know people want to say it and they did, you know. Yeah. Uh, when I was watching that, seeing OJ, uh, it w was it, like I said, it brought me right back to uh, the, the mid '90s. And uh, he is just stupid. He's still <laughs> very, he's still very stupid. He, is, right? he can't. You, you know, I, I I'm a huge fan of Columbo. Let's show Columbo. Sure. Sure. Like, and the worst thing anyone can do on Columbo is talk too much. Like, oh, like, my God. Because it's always like, a, I just can't understand how they came in through the window when this... And they're like, well, obviously, Lieutenant, he came in here. And you're like, shut up. Don't tell him anything. And OJ's sitting there, and it's like, well, I walked in, and he had a gun. And I'm yeah. like, OJ... 
This you fuck up. Shut up. Yeah. Yes Just or no. Yes or no. Say right. you're sorry. Yes or no. Say you're sorry. And he couldn't blame himself. It was one of these things where everyone else was to, <laughs> to blame. And huh. it was, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I had nothing to do with trying to get my memorabilia back. Yeah. And, and and he blamed the entire room of people. Well, they're all a bunch of assholes. They, yeah, wow. yeah. Everyone they're all a bunch of, yeah, 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 exactly. It was that, and I'm watching this just going like, oh my God, shut up, OJ. But then they let him out. Yeah. They did. Well, they had paroled him on the, I didn't know that you, they paroled him on the other ones too. So right. I, I, they did kind of seem like they were going to, and like nine years for that type of thing is probably. Yeah, enough. But, but he killed two people. Yeah, he did. <laughs> See? But that's not what the, actually, <laughs> he's responsible for the death of the two people. Oh. In a civil sense. In a civil uh, lawsuit, he was responsible for the death. But he's not actually guilty of killing them criminally. Yeah. You See? Isn't that, isn't that hilarious? That's right. Um, uh, which, Jesus. Which, and he wants to do a, a, a podcast. He should. He wants to do a, a, um, a webcast and a uh, maybe a vlog. A vlog? Uh, would, yeah, yeah. I would watch OJ's vlog. Yeah. Who the hell wouldn't? I'm like, who wouldn't want to watch a vlog? No. <laughs> 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 oh my God. I would definitely watch it. I mean, it's easy to say I wouldn't, but I'd watch right. it. Right, you'd watch have it. to watch that. Yeah. Were it's... you Were you watching? I, I was watching the CNN feed of it, and you know they took. A... Did they talk about how uh, Trump was responsible for <laughs> OJ killing those people? They did. Yeah. When they took a break, though, <laughs> and then they came back to explain their verdict. Yeah. You know, they. Uh, I don't know if all the feeds had it, but they had OJ live, and his mic was on. But he didn't necessarily know he was live. Oh, shit. And it was like he didn't say anything terrible. But it was amazing that after a murder trial, <laughs> after an FX series about what a piece of shit he was, after an, a, a 10 hour documentary about what a piece of shit he became and nine years in jail. Yeah. He was still life of the party, owning the room. Oh, yeah. OJ host. When you saw, uh, when you saw him, uh, they they said he was ninety years old. Mm -hmm. That one was like, oh yeah, well you're ninety, and, and then he's like, oh, she's like, oh seventy. He's like, well, I feel ninety, and the room's like, ah, <laughs> give it up, let's give it up for OJ. Yeah. One more time for OJ. You might recognize OJ if you ever scooped the throat off a walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Somebody, somebody also pointed out that like uh, the the parole officers or what, I mean whoever makes those the the judgments I don't know what yeah. they're called. One of them was wearing a Kansas City Chiefs a tie. Chiefs tie, and they were like, "Oh, you didn't technically play for the Chiefs, of course, but yeah. just that he's that big of a football right. fan is a little is a odd. little odd, it's right? A yeah. weird. You would think, yeah, if he had a Bills tie, that would really be a problem. <laughs> I was thinking, was he? Uh, was there any instance? Because I don't know football from a fucking. Was, was there an instance where the Bills maybe got defeated at some point by the Chiefs? Oh, was no, he, he trolling. Said, he OJ? said he just wanted to keep the mood light. Oh yeah, really, when, yeah you a, a the, when you have a murderer in the when you have a murderer in the room that you're releasing to <laughs> yeah, the public, you yeah. want to keep Let's a keep good the light, mood light. Mood. We don't want people to start thinking of the people he almost beheaded. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> who, wants, who wants to think of that bummer? <laughs> hey, I don't want to be the mayor of Bummer City when right. we have the double murderer here. <laughs> Look, I got my little tie. Why didn't he have one of those bow ties that spin around like Pee Wee? <laughs> that would have been great. We're going to uh, allow you to <laughs> get a <laughs> not a parole hearing. OJ's no. parole hearing. OJ. The people that, that throats were slit were yeah. almost beheaded. Yeah, yeah. That's how bad it was. The, a bad, the, it was the, a bad one. I guess the uh, the um, uh, Browns and uh, Goldman Goldman family was a little uh, uh, upset. Fred Goldman yeah. about is that. Fred. just so, so upset. <laughs> how many times does he have to get that upset in his life? You know, wait, wait, was, he, was he upset again uh, publicly, you mean? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You well, know, like, he's watching it. Like, what the? How do you let this motherfucker out? It's got to be infuriating. Yeah. You know this guy killed your son. Yeah. And there he is, like, constantly getting a break. Yeah. I mean, nine years in prison doesn't sound like a break. But when you kill two people, yeah, that it's ain't a break. bad. It's a break. That's a break. It's one of the great... If, you, if you're if you're convicted of murder, yeah, it's the best case scenario. Oh my god! <laughs> but it's rare that you get away with double murder and then fuck up over a signed football. Yeah, <laughs> like what a dumb OJ. Now well, doesn't he owe money to the two families? Every dollar system? he makes, right. they get. So they, they say, say it's pension. up, they say it's up pension, to fifty which is, million now, which is where all his money comes from. The right. pension. Um, 
But as far as, because think about it, OJ could sell some crazy memorabilia. Yeah. Like he could just sign things. I picture an assembly line of like football helmets that he just puts on, takes off, <laughs> puts on, takes off, and he signs it, worn by OJ. He could sign knives and people would buy oh, them. But, could, could OJ you imagine? signed knives. You think, that would, would be a, you think people would have a problem with that? Have a pro- <laughs> you know what, though? You'd have a hard time finding people who would sell it. Like legit yeah, sellers. Yeah. Like it'd be hard to get people. I, would be, I, it, memorabilia sellers are yeah. scumbags. His a stuff lot of doesn't them. do that well. OJ stuff does not do that well at memorabilia stuff. He yeah. does okay. Yeah, you don't think really Steiner doesn't. Sports would sell a knife? Yeah. yeah. He, oh he'd my sell, God. He'd sell uh, blood from the murder scene like it was dirt from Yankee Stadium. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. sprinkling it into picture frames and whatnot. Uh, yeah, we get a piece of blonde hair matted to it. <laughs> as long as I get to hear the Rivera cardboard mitt story again. <laughs> I haven't heard that one. Oh, Jesus. Ah. So, you know, when he was growing up in, uh, where was he? Where was it was in Panama. Panama. Yeah, well, he used to use a piece of cardboard taped to his hand oh, as a mitt. Yeah. That's Why how not? dedicated Why he was. to. <laughs> You didn't like that story? Oh, so I liked it the first three times, maybe. <laughs> yeah, he did tell it a lot. I just kept telling it. But they said, that, you know, when OJ was first going through his trial, they used to, you know, he was locked up, obviously. Yeah. And they would bring pieces of footballs. Not like full footballs, but just like De- panels. Yes. Well, and that, No, well, it wasn't to play. It was just a, just the leather panel. And he would they s- squirrel them in, rolled up up their ass? <laughs> Is that how they get him into the joint? They put him in a cake. <laughs> but he, and he would just sit there signing football panels, like wow. panel after panel, and that's how he paid. What for a brilliant his way to do it! And then and then you put the uh, panel, you sew it back onto a football. Or it's they, such a smart way to do oh. it. Or they bring the number of a jersey. Yeah, have him sign the number and then sew the number on the jersey. I never would have thought of that. That's such mm. a smart way to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'd be trying to get full footballs in. Into the joint. Yeah. Just holding them uh, under your arms. Uh, up your ass. <laughs> uh, your problem would be it would keep falling out. <laughs> and it uh, never ends. Uh, you know, it just <laughs> brings us through every time. right up where we left off. <laughs> and boy, I, I got to uh, say, in the next couple of weeks, let's just say we might have pre-taped uh, I just want to say that oh there is on a, on a on one of the upcoming uh, Chipper podcasts. Uh, wow, is there a barbaric <laughs> line? <laughs> wow, that is so much fun, man! Holy I shit. I look forward to doing those, I'm, Jimmy. It's, it's so, so much great. fun. We laugh our asses off. Uh, I love doing it. Yeah, last night was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah one is out Sunday and then one's out the week after. But there was a oh barbaric. my god! Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. And again, right back where we were. <laughs> like that's exactly when did you, when did you stop being mad at Sirius uh, as a as a company? About eight forty this time morning. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, as a, as a company. A- after a while, you get some uh, perspective on everything that happened, and you could kind of uh, step away and look at the overall picture. And you're kind of like, yeah, all right, I see what they did here. <laughs> and it's probably easier that your network's successful. So yeah, yeah, that's, that that's another thing. Like, I have complete freedom to do and say whatever right. the hell I want at any moment. And that's proven because I've recently been kicked off of Twitter. <laughs> uh, my, yeah. my, my Twitter account is, um, is uh, permanently suspended. <laughs> so I went with uh, at Anthony Cumia XYZ. How did you get fired from the thing that got you fired? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And by the way, I never got suspended from Twitter for writing the stuff that got me fired from here. <laughs> yeah. But then I got suspended from Twitter. Twitter was cool with it. Twitter was fine. <laughs> they weren't here. <laughs> Twitter's just gotten weird. Like they, they've done that to a few yeah, people. Yeah, like yeah. They, they've gotten very, uh, they've just changed their, their I guess yeah. the bigger they've gotten, they've kind of just changed their MO. Or I was actually. Um, sticking up for my good friend Jimmy Norton. That's right. There was an article written by some slob and uh oh, come on he she... still works here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Falcone Whoa. that was that was in the chamber for a long oh, time. Oh my god Falcone <laughs> Oh Jesus. <Mic> drop. <laughs> that 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 uh that was a good one. Yeah way to go buddy Fucking yeah. Denny he doesn't play games. <laughs> yeah, no, some 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 witch. Uh, she uh, she wrote some article about uh, Opie getting fired, and, yes. And her her take on Jimmy and myself on there was was wrong. So Jimmy was like, uh, "You wrote something cordial." I wrote, "Madam, your uh, article was poorly researched." Because she said that, like, when Anthony got fired, that frequent guest Jim Norton was brought on. Yeah, like, frequent guest. Yeah, like, not that you have to know the whole history of the show, but it, like, you understand that I was, it, it, I wasn't just a guy that they chose. But all right, you'll sit, Nancy. Ant was never replaced. Yeah. Right, he was never replaced. I mean, the show was named. Opie and Jim Norton, or Opie, Opie and with Jimmy, Jim or Opie, Opie with yeah. Jim. Oh, yeah. I mean, depending on... <laughs> yeah, Jimmy wanted... Well, depending yeah. on... I remember 
at one point the show name I believe changed four times in one day. But <laughs> yeah, holy shit. yes, I was, I, was such a, I was I was out of town and I just so I wasn't here looking at all the gossip and just looking at Twitter and just watching the name like, change. What is the name the of this day. thing? Oh yes, right. I was having a meltdown screaming at Paul. I was trying I was trying to erase my name off the fucking <laughs> television screen off all this. What, what do you call those things? The Chiron? No, no. no the wall. The oh, wall. the Sanitez. Oh, Sanitez. Yeah. You. Sanitez. You know, what? You know what I'm talking about, right? Fuck oh, yeah. Wallpaper. <laughs> they do that Black Magic Woman song. Oh. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I've been car gets it all wrong. Uh, I love it. So I, I decided to write um, something a little more direct. To her, yeah, as, as you tend to do. Yeah, yeah. I said, uh, I, I said that. Um, what's more, em it would be more embarrassing than the than the article you wrote to be. And then I wrote uh, something about a fat, tranny-looking uh, man, woman with period, red. Uh, You're very descriptive. Blood hair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was just awful. Period. Hair. Period. <laughs> period. Blood red hair. That's like. Because she was one of these fat girls that fucking <laughs> dye their hair red. Like so now, that bright red. So it's like, look at me. Oh, someone comments on my hair every day. Of course they do. Because that's, that's the change that needed to be made, right? Your oh, hair yeah. color. She just looks like a fucking zit ready to pop. <laughs> Big fat zit. <laughs> uh, so she, uh, I guess she got mad and her little followers got mad and uh, reported me. And Twitter saw that. And I was like, wait a minute. I didn't say she was. I said the story would be as embarrassing as if you were that. Not to say you are. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. They didn't you buy like that. You like Spider trying to talk his way out of it. No, I thought you said no, Spider. No, no. <laughs> what am I on a fucking pay me no mind list? <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, Twitter's gotten fucking very, uh, they, they've, they've axed a lot of accounts and they've fucking, they're, they're, they're just. Uh, yeah, if you think it's a forum for open discussion, Twitter, you're out of your fucking mind. No, it's, it's not. It's not. And, it's not. Uh, you know, they, they have rules and if you break them, you're. You're banished. And the fucked up thing is, it's been built up into a thing that everybody has, and you have your your uh, account, and and then they can just take it away from you, and you're kind of left. I had this weird, like a lower version feeling of when I got fired. Really? Right. Yeah, because I'd had that account for years. and it's and a, It's a medium you use to talk to your the, people. Yeah, I had all the, all the followers and stuff like that over, over the course of, what, 10 years or something like that? And... Uh, and then it was like, it's gone, and you're not in the club anymore. Yeah. And it's like, wow, they could really fuck with you uh, with this um, whole thing. When they can and remove they your, your, yeah. vo your social voice. It's a weird yes. thing. Yes, it really is, because they make it so important. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, oh, this is important. You check it every day. You're commenting. You hey, know the people. Have you written them? Sometimes if you write them uh, and, 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 and present your case. Yeah, I said, hey, you fat Fucking blood, <laughs> period, blood red. No, oh, that's probably the right way to do it. I didn't, uh, I, I didn't do that. No, I, I'm going to wait a little while and see yeah, if I can get it to re them. But that's reinstated. Their, that's their trick. Like, they spent years making it so that people, especially in entertainment, were reliant on them. Reli yes. And then they go, oh, by the way, you can't say anything bad about anyone that we like. Yeah, we're just going to pull the rug out from yeah. under you. I'm going to start my own social media thing in my basement. <laughs> see how that works. <laughs> Hopefully it'll, it'll catch on. You just call it twit. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah, I, I, I hope that Twitter thing works because I was thinking about filing a complaint oh. because I got a whole bunch of angry replies from people who were upset with me because somebody named at Anthony Cumia XYZ was complaining on Twitter that I didn't follow them yet. Yes. <laughs> yes, I was very upset at the likes of Sam Roberts. Do I follow you? I, I think I, I wasn't yes, sure that you was you. Yes, you do. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah, well, that's the problem. Once I got uh, suspended, permanently suspended, which is exiled, it's fired yeah. from Twitter. I was fired from Twitter. Uh, you know, the imposters swooped in. The imposters. Oh, yeah. no. Anthony Cumia, they put the same picture I had, and then it was just awful stuff, you know, on there. <laughs> and, and, and I'm like, ah, oh, who's going to really believe that? I see people that I that used to follow me following the imposter. Like, no, you idiot. And then they're like, how do we know it's you? Were you asking who's going to believe you were posting awful stuff? Well, true. That <laughs> should have been. <laughs> Fucking Travi. 
Yeah. Oh, why don't yeah. we just stop? Look at him go. Home run, Travi. Thanks. By the way, <laughs> happy anniversary, Travis, by <laughs> the way. You. He's known now, yeah. do, and I don't want to, I know, but we will, we do move forward. Yes. And he is now known as the Travis dog. <laughs> oh, of course. I think so, that went away. No, no, it's still here. You don't think I don't know that? <laughs> it's, it's, everyone knows that. It's still very popular. He's the Travis dog. Yes, he yeah. is. Yeah. <laughs> he's the real, he's the only one on, that the fans still like is Travis <laughs> Tesh. Just give yeah. it time. And where, uh, pray tell, is the era? Rock. Well, Iraq is in charge of our channel. Operations yeah. manager. But I guess he's a... Operations no, manager? He's in, uh, no, he's in the operations California. model for the game. Oh, jeez. He's in Comic-Con. God. Yeah, somehow he's managing our channel from San Diego from Comic-Con. From Comic-Con. Yeah. Now, is this a show-related thing? Will he come back with uh, all kinds of... Uh, dolls and everything. Do- dolls, <laughs> yes. Pup- puppets. Puppets. What <laughs> <laughs> the hell? Puppets. It's always it's always it's always a smart career move when uh, the show that you're on yeah. gets taken off the air and you're like, but I'm still going to Comic Con though, right? And you go, yeah, you know, that's... like I want to get as far away from here uh, without crossing an ocean right. as possible. So right. is that what he's doing right now? He's in Comic Con. Do you think he's doing all like work related duties? He's doing duties, Dude. I bet. But, <laughs> oh, whether they're is. work related or not, he probably lets himself go as far as snacking. In and out burger. on trips. <laughs> oh, do you think he, he oh, cheats yeah. a little? Burger. He cheats yeah. a little oh, on yeah, his yeah. diet. He's on the West Coast, you know. <laughs> right now he's gnawing through a belt. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. He'll be back next week. Next week? Oh no, wait. He's going to another Comic Con. Uh, what? Yeah, see, one? That's I thought too. When he became the full time like channel guy, yeah, I was like, great, we'll start having E Rock on the air, yeah, and get updates on the channel and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, when can we get him on the air? And then the, the guys told me they were like, well, you can't. He's at San Diego. He's at Comic Con. Oh my god. We don't why need is he, why, why would he do that? We don't need coverage from Comic Con. It wasn't serious that sent him. I think he's I think he's collecting uh, 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 stuff for the It's Eric Nagel show. Oh, okay. Right. Well, as long as it's professional, uh, <laughs> a professional trip. Right. That's he came over to my Fourth of July party, hey. which was uh, great. Yeah. Because it was uh, the party was way too up and fun and happy. Oh, I see. So he came in and evened it out a little bit. Did he? Brought everyone down a little bit. I guess I didn't get the text <laughs> for the party. Oh, oh no! Oh, oh Falcone hits again. Stop the fight! <laughs> Stop the fight! <laughs> Don't start that open invite shit either. You have an open invite <laughs> shit. <either. laughs> no, I was. We were talking actually. Uh, I would love for you to come on my program. And, you said uh, face wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you couldn't get that out quickly enough, could you? <laughs> I'd love for that to have been an actual conversation that Ant and Keith had. You know, Keith, oh, you know what I'd love? You know what I'd love? Falcone to come on my We face. were talking about Falcone and uh, how he should uh, come on yeah, uh, the, the show and maybe spin some uh, hot wax. I'd like to do that. On, on the program, oh, uh, like you, you used to uh, on our yeah. program. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We should figure that out. Some fun. Do a little party. Yeah. I came to your house the night when you got fired. When I was there. You were there. Yeah. I came about midnight. Remember that giant fat guy who you didn't know where he came from? Again, he's just from Comic Con. He's from Florida. We all know he's from. I was going to go with. I just rode up with him in the elevator. No, (laughs) No, don't. He'll tell on you. No. (laughs) (laughs) We just. I I just took a video of him in the bathroom. We were laughing. I posted it. He loves it. He loves it. No, it was. uh, Yeah, you you were there. Was were you? you came to a party of mine and, and actually spun uh, right. music. And then, then the police came. And the police came, yeah. right. Yeah, we yes. time. What, Sting was there? Oh, yeah, he yeah. was singing. Yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> Rock fan. But you were the perfect host. Like, yeah, yeah, burger? I tried. Yeah. You want a burger? That's yeah. the perfect host. That's all it takes. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to get Denny for my part. I, I did my first uh, get together July third. I saw that. I, oh, yeah. I did invite you. You were un- unavailable. I know. I had a uh, guest at yeah, my house a whole week at the long. time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I tried to get Denny to spin at mine too, but he was already booked. I had a gig. Oh, uh, your house, uh, your place looks uh, gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it looked very nice. Everybody seemed to be having a lot of fun. Yes, I would love you to come over. I would love to. You should see it with the outdoor camping chairs in the living room. Like that any good party. Has. I saw the pictures. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to spark up a fire right on the floor there. <laughs> I had I I threw them out right away though. I didn't. Uh, you did? Yeah, because I didn't know where to put them. Yeah. I know. Fifteen bucks a pop. Just give them to some homeless people. I don't well, they they're always there. sitting on everything. Why the cops always <laughs> moving them along anyway? Yeah. What did you have? The, he has the old folding chairs. Yeah, those folding chairs with, on like sticks with the the covered in canvas. They yeah. got cup yeah. holders. In like the arms. Bill Murray was sitting in in St. Vincent in the backyard. 
I have no idea. I don't know what you that never is saw either. that movie? No. Oh, that is. Oh, we that's we a do good we movie. do movie references twenty four hours a day. You don't know that one? And that isn't one of them. It's St. Vincent. It's a more a recent good film. movie. Is it? Yeah. It's more recent. I'm not it's into his recent movies. Bill that, Murray? That was a good yeah. one. No, that was a good What's movie. it about, Denny? Yeah. Uh he was a a, a fella who lived in Brooklyn. Fella. Who was in um, I guess a drinker and a gambler and uh, oh, went, right out, there. Went, out, <laughs> went out with prostitutes and he oh. had a stroke and then he was sitting in the backyard. Uh, Melissa McCarthy was in it too. Sounds hilarious. Yeah. It, was Jesus. it was a good movie. It was a good yeah. movie. And he was sitting in the backyard singing a Bob Dylan song and he was oh, sitting on one God. of those chairs. I, I thought you would have known so you would have been able to stroke, it. was he singing uh, 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 heaven's <laughs> door? Oh, <laughs> I guess so. Oh, <laughs> 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 stroke. I thought it was a good movie. It was set in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. We already, you said that. Good. Yeah, yeah. I love when Dennis gets earnest when you're yeah. like, "Yeah, it sounds hilarious." And he goes, ah, "It's a good movie." Okay, yeah. it's a good movie. It was set in Brooklyn. Yeah, not, not far uh, from the Gowanus. Yeah. He's got a little more gumption than he used to. Yeah, yeah. He Danny he don't take any shit no. anymore. I like it. I yeah. do too. Yeah, like that fucking Paul kid. He don't take any shit. No, he doesn't. Wow. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul likes to. Uh, he likes to let resentment build and fester. Yes, oh, he does. Inside man. of his body. And well, then, he uh, was in the perfect place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of resentment uh, yeah. to, to bubble over. Yeah. No yeah. Uh, no forgiveness had been sent. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he was very uh, very upset, Paul. So you got an earful in the elevator, huh? Yeah, a little bit. It was, uh, I was still kind of, you know, just, oh, my God, I'm actually going to walk out of the elevator and uh, be, be up here. Did it's anything, kind of a weird thing. Well, the lobby's very different now, right? Or yeah, to totally the... different. Oh, right. Re redesigned yeah. and everything. Yeah, that that was a, it was very beautiful. But then coming up in the elevator, I was like, oh boy, I'm really walking in this fucking place. Three years, it's a while. It's you know? a while. Did you? Get, yeah. Were you like, what? how are they going to react? Because it's weird that You'd be like, find out last night that you're welcomed back. Yeah, And then yeah. as soon as you get here, it's like, it's going to take 45 minutes to get security clearance. Yeah, I didn't Are know that, that part. There's like snipers in the lobby but, just waiting yeah. for you to come up. <laughs> but it was just, you know, I even apologized to Anthony, too, because uh, we got, you know, we've been trying to get Anthony as a guest. I've been fighting for very hard. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they finally just uh, all of a sudden out of the blue just went, yeah, okay, um, you know he can be a guest. And and, and uh, I didn't, I was so eager. I just texted, but they hadn't talked to security. Like and I was a, apologizing. Like an end. excited little boy. I was. I was so was happy. Like, Yay! And then just not making the arrangements. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, oh, I don't know. I we were having a party. <laughs> yeah, Why? He, they, but then, but he said okay. He said. He said. <laughs> you said he could come. Yeah, but Roland really did the right. You know, Roland. I I I panic emailed Andrew Moss and Scott. I, I wrote important. In the, oh, you wrote important oh in, in the heading so they would look at it because they might not recognize my email address. Yeah, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I was like, oh no! I got a I got a, a text from Jimmy last night and it said, uh, "What are you doing at eight o'clock tomorrow morning?" Isn't that like a fun way to like? I know what you're doing. Yeah, I, know. I didn't know I if he was in you. town either. I wanted to surprise him, but I didn't know if he was. I, I you never you, know where. You yeah. wanted, you wanted the big news to be in the follow up text, right? Like you yes. wanted a little bit of pomp and circumstance. So I just said, I, I wrote back. I said, calling into the uh, Jimmy and Sam show, and uh, and then he goes, no, coming into the oh, <laughs> Ooh. I was so then I decided to stay in the city last night. I was afraid to send Anna a text going, "Dude, come in tomorrow," and having him go, "I can't, I'm, I'm away." I was like, "Oh fuck!" You feared the rejection. Well, I no, do. I, 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 I did have to juggle my schedule a bit. I was supposed to go to John Sahag today <laughs> to get oh, wow. my hair done. Well, now you can just sit on it after this show. Pack <laughs> <laughs> off. I'll pack off. Denny, comment. I just said you stayed in the city last night? Yes, I did. You didn't bring your camera, right? Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, oh yeah. You know what I love about Denny? Is that now he's like he's like on fire a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. And he's going to keep attempting until no, it's no, like... No, no, no. I like it. No, no, only if it's right. I, I mean, like I'm, it. I'm working he's with got the, moxie. Working yeah. with two professionals here. I like That's that, right. He did it. See, he did it again. He did it again. He did it again. <laughs> oh, no, no. He nailed me that time. He did. Yeah, he got me. Two <laughs> professionals. He got, he got me good. No, I've, uh, I've kept my photography to um, uh, Long Island. Good. The nice neighborhoods. <laughs> <laughs> the nice neighborhoods of, of nice Long neighbor. Island. I, so, yeah. Here's what, the worst part. Boy, Monday morning, they're just going to hate me and Sam again. <laughs> oh, yeah. This is uh, not. Uh, so, guys, Monday don't morning. Your, don't get those expectations. It so. happens. We, I mean, look. I know I'm probably the only one that doesn't get any hate on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, but you do. Oh. oh. Yeah. I Although my favorite of all time is Tranpa. 
That's one of the Tran-pa. funniest ones. Yeah, Tran-pa. Tranthony's funny. Too. Tranthony's funny, but yeah. Tranpa was one of the like I read that. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, that's <laughs> hilarious. Like you're an old man, right? Like and I'm, I could be a grandpa, people. right? And then it's like you know, I've had friends that uh, are uh, of transgendered, uh, and then and I'm Tranpa, right? Yeah, that's what. They, how did yeah. you? How did you skip a generation that you're more tolerant to trans people than you are to black people? Um. Have you ever been robbed by a trans person? I have. <laughs> if they stole my dignity. <laughs> they, they, they stole my, 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 my old views of myself. <laughs> Holy shit. Face down in the pillow. They took the old Jim Norton and put the new one in. <laughs> Ah, Christ. Yeah, and then the I'm name, apparently going... Oh, what's that? The names are funny. The trap yeah. made me laugh. And then I'm loud. apparently um, I'm going broke. I'm spending all of my money on uh, Compound Media. Uh, Keith is bilking me of it. Uh-huh. Keith, did you hear the latest one? We have um, we fired the cleaning staff because we couldn't afford it. And now we have uh, Garrett and John and Allie cleaning up the studio. Really? Yeah, that's, that's good. the latest one. I think that's one. the way it should be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's Fucking the latest one. Rule wow. of an iron fist. Yeah. It's so, so far. So this co-host announcement yeah, coming oh, August twenty first oh. is going to be very lackluster. If you guys, you got no cash. That's just it. That's the it's, problem. Uh, you know, we had to really go down on the scale of uh, people. Um, it's okay. I'm going to announce it. It is Bobo. Oh wow! <laughs> he's been here. Oh no! He's I would actually it. love that. Oh, he's he's, he's going to believe it. Oh no! Um, Anthony, uh, who do we got as a guest today? <laughs> <laughs> How great would it be if on announcement day? You announced Bobo as a joke. Didn't tell the audience at first, but yeah. also didn't tell Bobo. Well, didn't tell Bobo. So and Bobo he and the audience found out at the same time. Oh, oh my God, that is a joke. It'd be great. Oh, Jesus. And then we just leave the window open for him to jump out of. <laughs> I, I really thought I was the host here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I, I, I okay. Uh, he was trying to play it off, and he just wouldn't be yeah, able yeah. to. Yeah, oh, okay. You know, it's funny. It's it's really funny. But can I get paid anyway? <laughs> was, was was Bobo your biggest win in the, in the Opie Anthony divorce? The custody divorce? battle? Yeah. Big A. <laughs> the big, I got big A. Mm-hmm. And I got uh, Bobo, <laughs> and, and and I think I got a little bit of Stalker Patty, but didn't Patty? We've had her come she in. Did both. Yeah, 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 she did both. She was like, yeah, joint custody. She, yeah, she got. Yeah. She recently retired. Did you hear about that from Starbucks? Yeah, she yeah. came on my show and re- uh, she announced her retirement from Starbucks. I get a pension check, <laughs> and I get a pound of coffee every month <laughs> or every week. I think. Wow. Really? Yeah. I said she should set up a little coffee uh, thing for cheaper than Starbucks right, right in front of a Starbucks. Or she, should just, coffee. Or yeah. she should just stack them and try living in them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after eight years of fucking coffee things, you get a little house. <laughs> a hovel! <laughs> Live in a hovel. <laughs> yeah, she's come in. Patty's come in. Yeah. No one's heard uh, from Pat from Munaki. Oh, though. Pat was on my show uh, like last week. Wasn't I it? miss Pat. Last oh, week, so he, Pat he, too. he kind of co-hosted, <laughs> and it was great. It was hilarious. We went over his whole will, his father's will. Did you see that? No. Oh, my God. It's fucking tragic. Oh. His father, remember he was searching for his father sure. for, for so many years, and he finally like found out who he was and where he was and everything. Because uh, his his father ditched uh, him when he was like six months old or something or a year old, uh, so his father recently died. He, somebody, a relative, said, "Hey, check the the newspaper out. That's your dad." And it was you know whatever his name is, uh, you know Philbin, and um, Regis. He was Regis Philbin, <laughs> and he was a, a guy that was in construction, an iron worker, and stuff like that. So the will comes out, and I guess a lawyer had sent. Uh, Pat, a copy of the will, and there was one line in the will that said, for reasons known to myself, uh, my son, uh, I, have Pat, in, I have intentionally. Oh, oh, you have it. Yeah, read have in, it. For reasons known to myself, I have intentionally not made any provisions for my son, Patrick Philbin, Ooh. in this, my last will and testament. That's in what? there. Oh, That's what? not even like I forgot to put you in or didn't wow. put you in. It was specifically put in to to not give him anything. What a piece of shit. Wow. And so what he'll never have the answer as to why that's there? 
Maybe someday he'll have the answer you know, on the other shit. side. In, in heaven? In heaven. Oh, I see. Where he joins, rejoins his toes. <laughs> <laughs> what a cruel guy. That is wow. the most brutal fucking thing you could do. That, that's a fuck you to the mother or something like that. That's got to be something like that. Yeah. Uh, Pat uh, uh, speculated that, um, see, Pat has this half brother and he, he um, built to the father out of some money. And the father was under the impression that it was Pat that did it. Mm. And that's oh. the only that's the only thing Pat could think of that the, Do you for know, the reason. I, I was on the road with Kenny one time, and we were getting contacted by Pat from Munaki for money. And Pat is true, right? And I was going to give it to him, um, and then Pat said, "I." I and again, I'm going by. I, I think Pat said it was his brother. It's yes, not me. I, I remember think, that. I yeah. believe that's true. So possibly, maybe he did. Okay, maybe he did think yeah. it was Pat. That could be. That's the only speculation Some that Pat had. Some weird shit happened. But, and that's, but still, I'm, it's just like, oh, God, that's brutal. Maybe he thought Pat stole from him. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's maybe. terrible. Uh, poor Pat. Uh, what a bummer. Or they, like, maybe, it, couldn't, it just continues to... Poor Pat is even right. Even after he died, the father just had to stick him one more time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe he thought that... Uh, maybe Pat thought that... Uh, and the guy thought Pat stuck him first. Yeah, yeah, you know, but I mean, it's your son, you got it, and you should look into that maybe and see really who screwed you over before you just, in death, fuck the guy like yeah, that. just decide. Oh, you just leave, and, and not even give the answer. For reasons known to myself, it's like, oh. No provisions had been sent. <laughs> <laughs> Good day, sir. And then the most important in the divorce, we did get Sandy Kane. We got Sandy Kane we also. We got her too. Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. By the way, I've seen her uh, every night. Sorry to hear mm -hmm. that. Oh, in bed. Oh, ben, Do you wake up screaming? What does your wife yeah. say? Yeah. Fucking hell of a threesome you got there. Uh, <laughs> Chris, we, did, we did almost kill her the day that I pulled the chair out. That is true. Me. Chris yeah. Gethard? Yeah. Uh, his yeah. show's coming to True TV. Yeah. And uh, the, <laughs> the promo that they play is uh, a clip with her on the show. She's getting... <gasps> Oh, oh I didn't know she did a show. That's why she stopped emailing us. But they're playing it like e every half hour. Really? Wow. Is, yeah. Mm. Yeah. She's gonna be famous. No, she's not. <laughs> so if you don't want to see Sandy Kane, uh, don't watch. Yeah, this yeah. I fucking wow. Times Square. Ugh. You don't like it? She like she's there, and yeah. and the the guy. I, there's there's worse things that have happened in Times Square. Sure. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> well, that's another thing. Like I. Yeah, I've been fired from Times Square, and then people got run over and stuff like that. And I, yeah. All right. I, I walk through there, because uh, sometimes I do... Uh, oh, actually, tonight, uh, 5 to 6 tonight, I'm doing Tom Shalhoub's radio show on Fox News Radio. Oh, that's, fun. that's uh, great. Yeah, right? yeah, Tom's great, man. Like he's, he's a blast. Um, but when I, I do uh, Kennedy's show sometimes on Fox Business News, and then I walk to my studios uh, in, uh, in the 30s over there, and I have, have to go right through Times Square, and I'm just... I, I I recite how angry I am out loud. Ugh, look at this piece of shit. As they're walking by. Because it's loud and no one can really hear you. No one pays attention to any individual conversation. What are you so mad about? Yeah, well, everything. Okay. People, yuck. Yeah. It and really the, is all, a the tourists, the friggin' Mexicans dressed up in their uh, Elmo costumes. Ugh. Yeah, it really is a cesspool. It's not New York's best. No. No. Like they, you know how they say they cleaned up Times Square yeah. and it used to be porn and everything and stuff like that? Well, cleaned up isn't the, they just put a new type of garbage in there. <laughs> and, and that's what it is. <laughs> I just look and I see, like, I'll, I'll see some guy. I saw some guy that was obviously from uh, another state in the Midwest somewhere. He's standing there. He's got a fucking handful of money. Oh. And there's five stuffed characters around him pointing at his money with one hand, one guy, <laughs> and then individually pointing at each of the stuffed animals. And I knew what was happening right there. No, no, you have to pay him, him. You took a picture with all of us. So they're just shaking down people in there. And it's just... Uh, I hate them. I hate the person that's being ripped off for getting ripped well, off. Well, the, the ripped off one is that they're taking the picture with the kid or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and, and they got a tip. They have to, yeah, they have to tip. They have to tip as if it's the, voluntary. Yeah, yeah. There's Meanwhile, a sign there that says that and, too. Yeah, and yeah. There's a sign. What Meanwhile, they'll you do, would not, what they'll do is yeah. is let's say you're going to get a photo with Mickey. Yeah. Then everyone who's around yep. will jump into the photo. And then you take the picture, and now you owe all of them. Yeah, now you owe it's, six people. It's all scams going on and in you there. You technically don't have to get You can actually just walk away. You don't have to give them anything. They've been, people have been assaulted for walking yeah. away. In Times Square? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you, wouldn't army let, gets you. you wouldn't let your fucking kids near those stuffed guys the second they took their head off. It's 
Tony, <laughs> Tony Montana's under the fucking thing. Some it's people, just uh, gangsters. Some people think that they're part of Times Square. Like, oh, this is nice. Like when you go yeah. by, by the city. And, exactly. Oh, I never even nice. understand why it. people go to Times Square. <laughs> like, like well. once you take a picture of where the ball drops in fucking New Year's Eve, like this, it's just. What you going to go go to Bubba Gump Shrimp? It really is not Get the same here. as it used to be. Bubba yeah. Gump Shrimp. You wouldn't go there? No. <laughs> Why not? It's just like the movie. It's oh, yeah. the movie's playing. Like every time I pass it? by it, I just again out loud. I'm like, who the fuck is going in this shithole? The M and M store you don't go into. I want to go in there, People but I'm afraid I'll eat too much candy. Of the <laughs> people take pictures of the sign, the big neon, uh, or, or uh, like it's a very screen. architecturally big... impressive. Yeah, great, great See, architecture. You take Go to the Empire granted. State Building. It's we're, great. We're big applers. We right. you take it for oh. granted because we're big applers and we're we're, we're big applers all the time. Big applers. <laughs> yeah, oh. but somebody from another place, I mean, they don't get to see this stuff. I don't know. It's just well, people are trying to work. Get you, out of the way. You don't think it'd be fun? <laughs> I think to go into Bubblegum Shrimp and just start listing off the possibilities of different shrimps you could have. I wonder oh, how many people do that. I'll get on and start reading the menu and go, watch, watch, fry shrimp, <laughs> or popcorn <laughs> shrimp, or shrimp scampi. Look, I'm like Bubba. <laughs> oh, I wish you were dead. <laughs> They're terrible. You don't think that the the wait staff is like, oh, this guy's actually quite clever. Ugh. And then in between that, there's just bums. <laughs> bums are back. Yeah. The bums are back with a vengeance. They really and are. Then, and then since that maniac drove down the street and killed that girl and ran a bunch of people over, right. they decided to put the police big, giant NYPD concrete blocks uh, on the sidewalks, and you got to walk in between them, yep. which isn't that much of an inconvenience until you add the bums sitting now <laughs> on the concrete blocks. So now you got to walk between bum feet right. as you're walking down the side. I can't stand it. Who wants you that? Know, there's a guy. Bum feet. There's a guy who gets. Uh, who gets? Uh, oh, that's what Oscar Pistorius has. <laughs> <laughs> there's a guy who uh, is at my subway stop who uh, he, he smells like piss. I'm literally. Oh. <laughs> I'm yeah. surprised I didn't get beaten up for that one. <laughs> yeah, you, you should have. I, I... But he has like one of those big bolt. Like the front of his pants looks like he has a thirty pound water balloon. Like what the fuck is uh, that? What is that? It's it's almost like it's not like a dick bulge. It's like some kind of a giant tumor. You, you ever watch my six hundred pound life? Yes. That's like they show them naked because nothing shows. They're nice. covered by their own flesh in the shower, and you see where all those things are and what they are. They're just big rolls of giant fat. They don't look good. No. It couldn't, not elephantitis of the bowl. I, I don't know. It might be, dude. It really does look like that. Yeah. yeah. That was we one of those things as a kid that was always so funny. We should, take, we should take a break. We have, a, um, we, we have to break. And you that, take breaks here? We yeah. do. Wow. We do. We That's do a not couple. allowed. I know, right? And uh, we, we have a guest coming in. Yeah. Um, and, we can, you want to say? Yeah, we might as well. Yeah, Artie Lang's coming in. He's already, oh my he's already, god, he's great. He yeah. wasn't the mystery guest. We, he was already booked. Yeah. That's fantastic. And I, I love like, Artie. Oh shit, we're gonna we have Anthony Artie. and Artie. That's he a great is a show. Funny motherfucker. Yeah. So we have Antol Eleven. Yes, Daddy. Where's Artie gonna sit? That's a great question. Maybe I, Artie oh, will have to come the, in on Monday. Mar Mareska's giving up his seat. Oh, there you go. There right, it I is. was thinking Artie had to come in. You know what? Or gonna maybe let him sit out there a while. I'll go. I got work to do. I'll go. All right. I'll go. So oh, we have uh, Danny. Well, what, what can we say? Anthony Cumi is finally back in studio, approved as a yeah. guest. And uh, what can we say? Thanks for joining us, so man. So much fun. Oh, couldn't be happier. You. you could say well, that. Well, <laughs> yeah, you should stay through the break. I think. Oh, please, of course. <laughs> I would hope you'd stay. Um, and uh, what else we got? Uh, we're going to Montreal next week, and I got my Ooh. fucking. Uh, hey, you want to come with us to Montreal? I would love to. Come. I missed that right after. I was like, oh, I'm so glad they. Uh, after I was fired. They didn't, uh, in protest, you guys didn't go to Montreal and uh, do the comedy. Uh, the, you know, it was kind of nice. That's that, that was. It was solidarity. And, th yeah. and then it was like, oh, they did go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I had to listen. And I'm kind of like, I'm hearing stories and all the comics that were there, Billy Burr and everybody. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this is great. It, well, believe me, it wasn't as fun. It wasn't? No. That's what cool. I want to talk. When we get <laughs> I'm so glad. When we get back, I want to talk about, like, all the stuff. The, especially early on, I would imagine that you heard about that sounded like this amazing thing. Yes. While the rest of us knew it, it was just the same <sighs> bullshit as always. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to know about. And okay. uh, we'll be back with, uh, I can't believe I'm saying it, we'll yes. be back with Anthony Cumia. Yay! 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 <laughs> More Jim Norton and Sam Roberts after this. Jim Norton and Sam Roberts. He's 
saw me do it. <laughs> Jimmy goes, one, one, two, three. One, two, three. Watching you work that board so cute. Well, Sam, I know. I, 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 I'm getting better at it, but uh, I didn't have any formal training. No, I, Everyone else not. has had formal training, or yeah. Sam is an intern. They trained years ago. I've never trained, so I kind of learned on the fly, as we say. Yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I never had any formal training. But they showed you. It's not many buttons on it. That's only a few. Yeah, Please. it's it's pretty it's pretty much you just know. in. But you gotta ride yeah. the um you gotta ride the uh it's just down for quieter cock. and up for louder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I would pause for so long after that. That was an error on my part. <laughs> Well, I never saw this little camera right here. Is that new? That's Ooh. new. That's a, that, well, yeah, that's a 360 cam they just threw in here to, I guess, to see what, what they got. Anthony Cumi is in studio. By oh. the yes, it's a very special day. It's a very so special happy. day. I was yeah. just wa looking at Twitter uh, yes. during the break. Are and they uh, pissed? People, uh, people uh, seem very happy. Yes. Very happy to hear us all yapping together. And anybody that uh, is, is not able to because you had to run into work, uh, we obviously we're replaying, at least for the time being. It's not going to be forever, but we are replaying from 3 to 6, so you can catch it if, you, you know, people who haven't heard the whole thing can catch it this afternoon. Too. Yes, And we're on indeed. demand. And we're on, oh, yeah, on Ooh. demand. I keep forgetting on demand is the yeah, big get thing. get that app out. Get us on demand. Yeah, I just forget. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it happens. <laughs> Jimmy. It happens. Oh I fucking just forget. You're hilarious. Have you seen what Sammy Sosa looks like now? Yeah. Did you see him with his... With it's his... like an upstanding citizen. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. What the hell? Remember years ago, though? Like, yes. even during the Maguire Sosa thing that was... Go uh, he was kind of lightening up. And people were like, hey, is he getting lighter? And then he disappears for a while. He comes back and he's... Uh, yeah, now it's crazy. Yeah. Very, very light. But you expect even... me to believe McGuire hit those home runs because Sosa said so. It's the only time I can do it. <laughs> Does he also, fit a LIGO, by the way? No. He's also wearing the uh, the pink suit with his with the oh, pink, yeah. with the pink bowler hat. Is he's, that what he's doing? Yeah, he's doing that look. Yeah, What's he look, doing it for? Look at well, he's kind of, People are saying, you know, there's a lot of, of, of self-hate involved in the Dominican community and oh all this stuff. God. Is there? He's saying that he uses lotion to soften his skin, and it just happens to also, I guess, lighten it a little bit, he says. Yeah. Is that makeup he's wearing, or is that his skin? That's his skin. Wow. It rubs the lotion on the Dominican. <laughs> does this whenever it's told. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I think he took his melanin and gave it to OJ. Because <laughs> OJ is yeah. a lot darker than he is used he? to be. How do you get a tan in jail? In jail. You're in prison. Yeah. Well, I'm out in the yard a lot. <laughs> <laughs> would yeah, you have it, him on your show if you could? Uh, we, we've agreed we who's would. Who's Sosa or OJ? OJ. Oh, hell yeah. I'd hire the guy. Yeah, the way Sosa looks now, OJ would try to date him. <laughs> <laughs> We've had some... Uh, I'd hire the guy. I'd hire him in a second. When everyone else says no, we say yes. Yeah. When your, when your bank says no, champion. Champion <laughs> says yes. When everyone else in broadcasting says no, compound media says yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were actually uh, in a meeting with um, Anthony Weiner. Were you? Wait, yeah. wait, 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 oh, wait. No. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait. No. Oh, no. Hold on. You, you didn't get it. You got something, Chip? No, yeah. I know where you're going. Say it again. Uh, we were actually in a meeting with Anthony Weiner. <laughs> you got anything? Anything? Oh, no. What? <laughs> Chip, you were the one that oh. stopped everything for the... You asked me. I thought you had something. Yeah, I don't no. know. No, it's just... I got uh, it. Weiner. What about Anthony Pekka? Fuck yeah! There's the joke, Chip. Fuck. <laughs> Next time. God damn it. Next time, you're good. <laughs> but the Anthony Weiner thing did not work out? Uh, no, it didn't. But uh, well, I guess I we think know it was your co-host won't be then. Because Anthony, nah, Anthony was a little delusional, I think. Oh, no. Yes, I've said that before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so wait, uh, did, you, did you actually meet with him too? Oh, yeah. yeah okay, how did. was he pleasant yeah. to you? Uh, he's, he's a weird guy. Not, yeah. I don't have to say it. Like he's, uh, he can't concentrate. He's very, uh, jittery. He comes in with the baseball hat and the sunglasses on. Cause you know, he's, he's a scourge, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Uh, yeah, but we sat down and talked about, you know, him uh, doing a show. Well, he's also wanted to be the mayor and eventually the governor. Like he was a power driven guy. He was a yeah. good politician. Yeah, yeah. And now he's looking at himself like I'm meeting with the guy. Who showed my penis photo, which started the end, the beginning of the end. Great. You know, the, the funniest part of the yeah, whole thing circle. was, I, I just, I just took a shot and I emailed him and I said, Hey, uh, not sure what you're going to be doing, but if you'd like to have a voice and a platform, we would be interested in, in having yeah. you. And I CC'd Anthony, uh, you know, Anthony Kumi on the email 
And afterwards, I texted him. I'm like, there's absolutely no way. Uh-huh. And uh, he emailed me back. Yeah. So him, him and I got together. And we, Ooh, we met. Nice. Ooh. Take a little few photos. Yeah, a couple of oh, texts yeah. back and Laying forth. Laying in bed with your rods through the underwear. <laughs> yeah. And his son in the middle. <laughs> I admire your work. <laughs> Creep. I, I didn't like that Anthony ruined that picture by being in it. <laughs> uh, shit. And then, uh, you know, we agreed to meet the three of us. And we, yeah. we went out to lunch. And uh, we discussed having something on the network. And yeah. it, it's not that it didn't... Uh, come to be because we were going to continue talks and then and, and then it, it really kind of got bad for him right uh, <laughs> like, this was like before. i don't give a shit if he's sexting and and getting kicked out of his fucking job and divorced and everything like that but then when it was like oh wait a minute kitty porn charge yeah. allegations and stuff it's like yeah ah. all you need is two of those on the network <laughs> <laughs> We do draw a line. <laughs> amazingly yeah. enough, there is a line, and uh, <laughs> amazingly enough, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that's something you got to be. You just that's don't just know. it. Yeah, everybody. We would be like, I, I could literally have OJ on sooner than yeah. Anthony Weiner at this point. Did he know? Uh, that you guys leaked the photo? Did well, it come we, up in it conversation? It didn't come up in the conversation, but I can't imagine he yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, the first time when I met with him, and he said. Uh, so this is uh, Anthony from Opie and Anthony. And I'm like, oh, this is where he says, uh-huh. like, well, how the fuck do you think I would have anything to do with So you much guys? bad stuff has happened since then that, yeah. that's worse than that. Yeah. Because he could have survived that. He literally could have survived oh, right. that. If it was just that. Just that, dude. He was coming pissed. back and he fucked up again. But right. that was survivable. Yeah. He And he said, you know what? I really like those guys. And I was like, wow, oh. maybe we have a shot at this. And, wow. And when we sat, the three of us, you know, and they started talking. I mean, we know Anthony can t- talk to anybody. Anthony, uh, <laughs> yes, we do know that. Yes, and I, I sat back and I watched them, and I, and I, you know, we offered him his own show, but then we talked about even them doing a crossover together because they were very comfortable. Oh my, what a great show that would be! A wiener and a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was, you know, it was, uh, it was odd. It was weird. It like, is oh, odd, that's right? The He's sitting right there and you're like, that's the guy. Yeah. There he is. And he, it, and this was during the, um, the campaign, uh, the Trump campaign and everything. And when the, the news was coming out about him and his computer and, uh, Huma and Hillary. Did you uh, ask him about any of that stuff? Uh, not really, no. That you can discuss. He brought up some of the stuff. He's just like, yeah, he's like, my computer is nothing. Like, he actually talked about his computer. I'm like, oh, he's talking about that thing, the computer that everyone's talking about. Yeah. You didn't ask follow-up questions, though? When somebody, like, I feel like when I'm having a conversation and somebody starts saying things that they're not supposed to. Yeah. I just jump in, like, you opened the door. Now yeah. it's, now, now you're I on. Yeah, you're yeah. like fucking Mike Wallace. Yeah, that's that, right. He was retarded. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he was like Marcellus Wallace. <laughs> Dicking him. <laughs> yeah, so that that was weird. But over, over the course of uh, doing this, we've, we've talked to some uh, interesting folk. Yeah, who else you know? has uh, been a near, a near call? Because I know you did manage. So you missed Anthony Weiner. You How about managed, Spitzer? You managed to land Eastside yeah. Dave. Eastside Dave McDonald. Oh. The East Side Dave show is, I don't even know what it is still. Right. I watch it. It's like some kind of twisted, nightmarish version of Pee Wee's Playhouse. Mm -hmm. Where they Uh, destroy your set. They destroy my set. Yeah, yeah. He gets a producer. Here's how East Side Dave picks his producer for his show. When one producer leaves, and it's usually they're fired on the spot, or there's a fight or something, whoever's sitting in the audience... He'll pick a new producer. From the audience. You know who his producer is now? Oh, no. Big A. Oh, wow. That's Big so Big A great. is Eastside Dave's producer Good because Big A. Big A was there and kind of got up to protect Eastside Dave when his previous producer got up and flipped the desk over <laughs> looking to kill Eastside Dave McDonald. Well, I, wow. hope that, I, hope, uh, I hope he doesn't need his producer to talk about a stop set. That's going to be a, <laughs> it's gonna be a long break. <laughs> so Big A is doing it now? Yeah, Big A is uh, doing that. Why did the guy yeah. flip the table? I mean, I understand Dave uh, can probably uh, you know, get to someone if he's trying to. Uh, the guy fa- uh, fancied himself as a stand-up comic. So oh, he yes. got up there and started doing some stand-up comedy. And uh, Dave did not find it funny. Dave objected to it? Dave let him know oh, okay, that it was not funny. Ugh. The guy got pissed. 
uh, said he was going to start kicking D- Dave's ass. And uh, Dave said, you know, back and forth, go fuck ahead, you. fuck you. And that was it. He came over and flipped my $8,000 desk over. Did it break? A little bit. You they can't... fixed it. Did you charge him? Uh, we we nah. have uh, text messages saying that he admitted to it and he would make restitution. But we uh-huh. have we haven't really seen that. No real restitution. You have yet to collect. No. It's like saying, oh, what? The video guy here is going to get paid? Right. <laughs> what? Paul. Oh. <laughs> I heard that one, too. Oh, he, well, oh, he never got yeah, any. He was uh... supposed to make a few bucks. Really? It didn't come scratch. through? I didn't I, 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 it's funny. I actually through. just sent Paul a check because uh, of, of some stuff he did for me for Comic-Con. Oh, and really? Somebody, yeah, a little stuff. He, he wouldn't name a price. Nice. No, but you, nice you got to pay you. a guy who's doing a little something. For, I, I felt bad. Do you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hot dog has uh, has earned uh, a little bit of money for doing wrestling things for me. Yeah, you got it, man. These guys are doing some stuff. Yeah. I see you on that uh, WWE every so often. There, Sammy Roberts. As a matter of fact, I'll be on the WWE Network this Sunday. I, oh, you can't oh. do that. I'm going to need you to do something. That's too bad, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. I'll be oh. busy at the Battleground kickoff show oh really live at 7 p.m eastern Sam's on Sunday very good on that in the wwe network is, he's uh, very good on it. saw jim duggan gonna be there he, he won't no he's alive though We're but not he is that alive yeah. no, not that bit <laughs> oh god you know, yeah. my uh my stepdaughter and her boyfriend are, are big wrestling fans oh and when they found out that i am friends with the likes of sam roberts come on it was very very exciting Really? Yeah. They like oh. Sam? Oh, they love Sam. Which disgusted That infuriates me. Yeah, it disgusted <laughs> Keith as a guy who's known me since I was an intern helping him with homeless people. Oh, right, that's you true. You know, during the shopping sprees <laughs> yeah. and stuff. And now, yeah, the homeless shopping spree. Now this. little intern. Yeah. Boy, how you have climbed that ladder with just a b- mass of bodies underneath you. Yeah. <laughs> you really do leave some shit in your wake. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well. yeah he's been moonwalking over fucking skulls on his way up. <laughs> yeah. We didn't, we didn't rise peacefully. That is amazing. I look around and it's like, okay, I see, uh, I see Travis the over Travis there. The Travis dog. The Travis dog. And uh, Sammy Roberts, Jim Norton. It's like, that's pretty much like it. From the original original? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The original original. There's yeah. really no one. Uh, yeah. From 57th Street. We got Garrett. That's right. Stinky. Stinky from that. NEW. But he was Garrett. not a uh, part of this show. No, but he was over, uh, who was he working with? Jay Thomas. Jay Thomas. Yeah. Do you remember the song? Jay Thomas. Da, 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 awesome Garrett. Remember yes, awesome yeah, the Garrett? Yes, Awesome Garrett song. From, uh, that's from what, 2001, maybe? Oh, my God. So long ago. Awesome Garrett. He's great. Yeah. Love, uh, yeah, I'm happy to see him right over there. We he seems all, happy. always had fun. Yeah, he's, he's just a good guy, he funny is. guy. Uh, very, uh, I, could, uh, I could talk to him on the air, and he doesn't just sit there, die. You know, yeah. It's nice. Did yeah. you ever panic when you, you you're doing your own thing and it's like it's it's all you? I mean, Keith is doing it with you, but I mean, like you're it's like your your network and what like you like oh my god, it's gonna collapse, it's not gonna make it, or did you get to a point where you're like, all right, it's cool, man, we're we're gonna be fine. Yeah, early on, you know, it was I don't know if this is gonna work. It was such uncharted uh, territory. So uh, yeah, now though, it's it's moving along, knock wood, very nicely, and uh, you know things are happening. Uh, so I don't have that whole you know oh my god. It could collapse at any second, kind of right, thing. right, right. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, doing the show alone isn't that tough either. I like doing it alone sometimes. I like the uh, shows by myself, just be able to bullshit about anything. Like Alex Jones, and then I do Infowars. That's amazing. You do I that. do Alex Jones' uh, show every other Thursday from uh, three to four p.m. Uh, he leaves, and I take over his show for an hour. That's incredible. Let me ask you something. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing Alex Jones' show now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you mm-hmm. looked any more closely yeah. at building Siete, which is Spanish for seven? Oh, my God. Building seven. Yes. Uh, you know, they the fire department you, was told to stand down. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember at one point a lot yeah. of the theories uh-huh. that were brought up being uh, whimsical almost. I, Silly. Still, here's my take on 9-11. A bunch of filthy animals decided to get on planes and crash into buildings. There. That's it. There wasn't any conspiracy. Did they know? There, what, what? Did they know? Did the American government know? The American government. Well, of course. The CIA planned the whole thing. Absolutely. Oh, don't be, don't be actually, stupid. There's actually footage of that. One of those guys who allegedly died, uh, he's a pilot in another airline. Now. Oh, okay. Computers haven't picked that up. But... Is that right? That would yeah. be a little nerve-wracking, wow. looking in the cockpit and being like, oh... I, the guy looks, f- yeah. looks familiar. Where did I? Yeah. <laughs> I hope he knows how to land. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but uh, 
yeah, doing the Alex Jones thing is hilarious. It's but like you, nonstop. You have to talk. There's like segments. There's a five minute and a 10 minute and an 18 minute segment where it's just looking at that camera and rambling for 18 straight minutes. And I mean, not conversationally. You're just liberals, globalists. And, and it's it, once it's done and we go to break, I'm like, I have no idea what I was does, even saying. Does he have bullet points? <laughs> it is amazing that Alex can do that to look into a camera. And like just to be able to go, I mean, it's like fucking incredible to yeah, do. That. Yeah. It's hard to do. It's not an easy no. uh, job because it's uh, after we're done, it's exhausting. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And uh, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a it's a totally different thing than doing my show. Sure. And it's like I, right after I do it, I go to do my show. And the difference is just stark. But it's so much more relaxed doing my show. And that is all pumped up. And how long is his show every time? How, every, every day he does his show for how many hours? Uh, it seems like 12. <laughs> yeah. He's just yelling at globalists <laughs> yeah. and fucking contrails in the sky. And uh, Yeah, I, I guess he does a four-hour show. Wow. So it's um, 12 to noon to 4, or something like that. And uh, like I said, every other Thursday uh, from 3 to 4, he leaves. But it's funny. He's like, all right, take it over now for my show is uh, Anthony Cumia. Uh, Anthony Cumia from Compound Media is going to be on here, so uh, take it away, Anthony. And I'll be like, all right, um, boy, did you see on the news today, Fox News was actually saying that uh, Sessions, Jeff Sessions went, Anthony, let me cut in here. I was just eating, <laughs> I was just eating my lunch, and I wanted to say, I heard you talking, and... And I'm just cracking up. <laughs> Anthony, I was just pouring my chicken noodle soup out of my thermos. <laughs> and uh, what I think is that uh, Europe, the European Union... Uh, so, you know, it's so it's, it's, maybe it's 3.15 to 4 I get to talk. I mean, it's so great that that part... I love that partnership. The oh, you and Alex yes. Jones partnership is, after <laughs> sure. all these years... I prefer if it was with Jim. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. Yeah, it really it's, is it's amazing. hilarious. But it hasn't... It, your opinions on various conspiracies have not shifted terribly. No. I uh, you've had Lionel on the show, right? You not guys have you guys had Lionel. No, I like not, Lionel. Yeah. I love yeah. Lionel. He's out of his mind too. He's crazy because uh, he was on and he he's very articulate and concise and he researches things. But he believes that yeah. aircraft in this country are spraying shit out. Uh, and that's what the contrails in the sky are, the vapor trails. Okay. He honestly believes they are trying to uh, change the atmosphere, putting uh, stuff in the atmosphere to block the sunlight and trap in the uh, greenhouse uh, gases or something. And he believes that. And I'm like, you, so you're telling me that, that airliners with people on them every day are, are doing these covert missions. Where are the tanks and spray nozzles. <laughs> yeah. Where are the people to go, hey, I, I'm just going to Pittsburgh. What's spraying out of this wing? <laughs> I, but, but he honestly believes it. Things like that, those conspiracies, I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? It's, it's fun to listen to, and it's amazing that people can talk about them so much. Yeah. Like, there, Alex Jones, you have to say, is, is a real genius. He's a bona fide genius oh, because God, to be able so, to, whether yeah. you're right or wrong, to be able to be interesting and talk that much. Yeah. For that long, decisively, without a whole lot of no. none of that. Yeah, I mean, every time he's got more to say. Like, there's a brilliance to that. For your mind to work that well, yep. if he was talking about football, he'd be Scott Farrell, who's another genius. To be yes. able to talk about sports that well for that long, I'm sorry, it, it's fucking you're you're a, you're a bona fide genius to do that. He's and he's like impassioned for yeah. Every minute he's on, he's just on eleven, <laughs> yelling into that oh. mic. And now you look at what he's yelling about. And it's like, really? Yeah. What is there? A Have you met him physically or no? Um, once a while ago, but uh, no. He's in Dallas, right? Texas? He's in uh, te Austin, I think. Austin, Texas? Yeah, he's in Texas. Uh, if I ever go down there, I would like to. I want to, to meet Alex Jones when I'm down. I'm going to do a gig down there. And I, I don't even Ooh. care if I do a show. I would just like to meet him. Do you know if he knows? Because he's like a, a comedy fan. Do you yeah. think he knows you as a comedian? I, I don't. I know he knows me from the show. He would yeah. recognize my name just from Opie and Anthony. Yeah, I don't. I, mean, know. I bet he knows you as a comedian. I bet he's. We a have fan. a lot of similar friends. Yeah. I, I, I owe you the whole uh, Ventura thing, uh, where him oh, interviewing. Right. Oh right. Because yeah. he's, he's friends with uh, Jesse. Jesse. Jesse hasn't been on his show though in a long time. He hasn't done uh, this one. Either. I'm uh, I'm off the grid. <laughs> I'm off the grid, and I'm doing a show to tell everyone I'm off the grid. <laughs> I live in Mexico every. Six months out of the year, I moved to Mexico to get off the grid. <laughs> Do you? 
He's the most on the grid, off the grid guy I've ever seen. He really does pop up to let you know that he's not going to talk to anybody. That not. Right? You can't track me down. Mm. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you're let me six Google. eight. Yeah. <laughs> you're all over the place. You're six eight. No one's looking for you, Jesse. You're the, fine where you are. With of course his riff raff hair. <laughs> Yeah, he can't, can't like look that. at him without thinking that. Yeah, I really have put a label on him that he's never oh, going to shake. Never. Well, no, he's going to shake constantly. <laughs> <laughs> you ever see him? Yeah. Oh, let me tell yeah, Oh, is he a disaster? He certainly is. Yeah. But I would love to have him on again and interview him. And uh, yeah. I think someone told him, like, hey, man, those guys actually turned around and said that they believed that you uh, were wronged. I believed him in the Chris the Kyle Chris thing. Kyle oh, thing. really? That, I, that I Chris Kyle to, was bullshitting or something? Yeah, only be, I believed Chris when he said it on the show. But after Jesse, when I heard Jesse's explanation, sometimes you just hear someone explain something. And when we heard Jesse on Alex Jones explaining it, he just sounded like a guy who was telling the truth. It was mind control from the heart <laughs> system in Alaska. <laughs> uh, was it? I was a fighter, a Navy <laughs> SEAL. I wore a feather boa. <laughs> what a tool. <laughs> so speaking of stuff that happened here, what was the, like, you're talking about the comedy festival. Yes. That happened three years ago, like, right after you got fired. Yeah, I was, so, I was like, oh, fuck, I want to go to that so bad. What was the stuff? Because I think, uh, if I remember right, when Foo Fighters came in here, you were pissed. I would see the guests that were coming through here, and I was like, where the fuck were these guests right. when I was on the uh, the goddamn show? Arnold. I thought Arnold. of you with Arnold yeah. so bad. I was like, God, Arnold. fucking damn it, do I wish Anthony was here for Arnold. Okay. There was so many I would listen to, and I'd be like, oh, God, I would just ah. I'd go on about fucking like one movie. One character, the most obscure thing, like that's the shit I used to love doing. With a remember when De, uh, Dennis Quaid called in, and all oh. I would talk to him about was the movie Bill, <laughs> that yeah. fucking horrible movie made in like 1980. You didn't think that was good? He was a kid, but he was cracking up because he's like, "Who the fuck even remembers <laughs> this?" Mickey Rooney played the retarded yeah. guy, and he was the guy that helped Bill. He was doing a documentary on him, and. Uh, He's like, how do you even remember this? I'm doing the lines from the show. Yeah. We had when him in. Shatner came in and I was doing the Wrath of Khan scene through the <laughs> through glass. The window. Like that shit. And there's so many guests that have been on your show. Uh, and, and on uh, the uh, Opie, whatever that was called Who at knows? the time, whatever day it was. Uh, that I was like, fuck that! I, I would have loved to have talked to that person. Well, now that you uh, now we will uh, we can give you some advance notice of guests, and if there are people you would like to interact oh, with, that's true. We can have Anthony as a guest yep. come in, and there's plenty awesome. of people I would love to have Anthony. I, I was fucking miserable when Arnold was here. I was like, fuck, that was perfect. For that, yeah. but he'll be back. You know, oh my uh, God. so to speak. How was uh, he'll be back? <laughs> he was actually he was promoting a good movie. It was called Maggie. It was that weird? Oh, I saw that with that kind of indie kind of zombie. He was thing great in that chick. man. He was he really was good. That Maggie. Good. <laughs> yeah, it was. That it, it was great. I liked that. I, one. I loved him in that. And we've had some. I, I say Roland has done a great job. Really great job getting us the guests. And uh, this, this, the ten to eleven hour lot. How does he get guests when he's in HR all the time? That's a good time. Just ratting people out. <laughs> That's That's ratting yeah. people out. Snitch a Rooney. <laughs> uh, I think because uh, you know the, this hours when they're done with like Katie or, or Kathy Lee, whatever the fuck they're doing, and, and Hoda. They do Kathy and Hoda. They do a, a live with whoever's left. <laughs> they do, they yeah. do, yeah, GMA Today Show, yeah. Oh, really? So they do the rounds. And then they come here. At 10 to 11, that's, we get some great ones, man. That's awesome. That's so why it, Jason, I had to tell Ellis that, because Ellis wanted us to move oh, up an hour. Jesus. I'm not getting up an hour earlier. And it, Well, no, no. I, well, I told him that it was... I, I tell him, there's two reasons. I don't want to get up an hour earlier, and we don't want to lose these guests in this hour. It's amazing. You think he would like things. sleeping in, because, you know, all that action and skateboarding... I'm friends with Jason Ellis. Don't is, uh, ...is tough for an older guy. We made up. You did? Me yeah. and Jason. Well, I'm friends with Kevin and Pollock. You guys gave him a beating. I, sometimes we just got to take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where, like, the hours are so... You know how it is, man. Like, the longer you go in life, it's hard. I'm four, I just turned 49. Getting up in the morning after doing stand-up at night, my body does not recover. And I know, boo-hoo, fuck you, fuck you're right. It's it's an easy job. <laughs> boo-hoo, fuck you, But, dude, I went to bed. I mean, that's just me in the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to bed last night because the GNR was so late. Uh, I went to bed at like fucking one forty-five, two o'clock, and yeah, I used to do that all the time. We remember we were on six to eleven. Yes, and I would go to oh bed late, God. and I'd fucking I'd get four hours a night, and I would be loopy. But again, it was you and Opie, and I was chiming in, so it was a little bit of an easier gig than this is. I'm still young. For you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's all in good fun. 
<laughs> the uh, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah still, I, I, I would I would my schedule here was insane because I would uh, drink. get done with the show. I would drink <laughs> a lot. I would, <laughs> I would get done with the show and then uh, go home and nap, like just which was really sleep. It wasn't even a nap. It was right. it was yeah. the night's sleep in the afternoon. Yep. Wake up. Uh, hang out at night, whatever, go out, party, fucking have people over the house, whatever it was, and then take a real short nap between uh, whenever I went to sleep and had to get up again and come here. Your schedule gets it so was, flip-flopped. Yeah, crazy. But so eight in the morning is, well, for you to be hard because for driving, with I'm taking mass yeah, transit. Yeah. But now fucking uh, getting up at seven and being on by air is a way to like live and I can do it and not be fucking crazy. It's also that last hour though because I don't give that much of a shit about the schedule. I do whatever you wanted to do, obviously. You don't mind waking up. You, I don't care about yeah, waking up. Yeah, for me up, it drives me, I can't do it anymore. I yeah. wouldn't want to give up Fuck that, that 10 to 11 hour because... Like you said, that's when all the guests come in here. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. at first I was like, yeah, let's move to seven because I don't give a fuck. But then I went over and looked at all like the big people we've had in and 90% of them come in between 10 and 11 in the morning. So you got to be here, you gotta be at, here. That, at that time. It's just when I, they're in the building. I picked a, um, a, a very scientific method uh, to figure out when I was going to be on the air because I am on from uh, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, you are. Monday through Thursday. It's a great show. It's an amazing schedule. And, really and I figured it out because I was like, when can I be up? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much it. I think you really have to be a complete fuck up to not be able to be in by four. Which, by the way, is, is ironic that you say that because uh, the, I think the last time we were at your place... We were recording at three thirty, and you were late. <laughs> yeah, <So>. well, yeah, <laughs> right. We were, we're doing one of Anthony's uh, vacation shows. We came in. Yes, yes. and was late, and you were late to my own house. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, that was the thing no, when we, when oh, we were doing studio, it at, yeah. the, at the house. Three fifty-eight. No, three fifty-nine. Oh, I, I would run my... down the stairs with my pajama bottoms still on. Oh my god! To do the show because it was like. No, I, I'm home. I don't have to... But you, no traffic. You figured out, though, you were like, as long as I can start the show at 4 p.m. and I do the show... That's it. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm No problem Well, here. we finally thought it would be better to get a studio in the city. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I would I would actually leave the house right. and, and oh, get, yeah. have some type of interaction with humanity. I used to love those <laughs> early compound days. Oh, yeah. When it was like, because my dad would watch... And he'd call me, because he watches everything. And he'd call me, and he'd go, what's going on with Anthony? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? And he goes, well, you know, I love him. But, like, I was watching today, and he said that he went to the bank, and he did a half hour on going to the bank, because this is the first time he's left the house in four days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I would just not leave the house. So it was, it was kind of nice. I, I am taking uh, the Long Island Railroad in. Um, oh, much sure, better. It's sure, much sure. easier, dude. You're fucking. You adding years uh, to your life though, without fucking sitting in traffic. Uh, is there yeah, that could all be taken with a stabbing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, those people. Is it? Is the traffic bad coming from coming from Long Island? No, like, it's not bad. When I leave at uh, like six or six thirty or whatnot, it, it gets a little it gets dicey. So dicey. Oh, but it's uh, oh my fucking god. Oh, here comes Artie. Come here, my name is Artie Lang, and I'm an alcoholic. Hey, <laughs> what's up, guys? How's it going, oh, man? Shit. Artie Lang coming in. <laughs> yes, oh, yeah. fucking Artie, man, you look. Uh, you I lost know, some right? weight, buddy. Yeah, Artie looks thin. You lost uh, some weight. Well, Where thinner. Oh, I was going to say hello to you. Yeah, sit oh, right here. Oh, come here. Right here. <laughs> come here. Oh, my God. First host to ever get up. <laughs> you, uh, you look thinner, dude. You, you're making a conscious effort? I was in uh, the hospital. For, oh, sorry. No, don't worry about it. I've never done radio before. <laughs> uh, I was in the hospital for 15 days. and push him, push me off on Delauded. Uh, oh. you lose 80 pounds, but... Uh, I'm a slice of pizza away from being uh, John Panette. <laughs> 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 Dying at a Sheridan. Dude, but... keep doing it. You look great, oh, though. Thank you. you I look delighted. Uh, you mean? <laughs> no, we keep doing it. No, no you're right. I mean, I came out and I start. Let me put the heads up. Yeah. Uh, it's true. You're gesturing with your water. <laughs> oh, I'm no. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I, I came out and it's always like I go through that two weeks. Like, That's it. I'm going to be. I'm going to kettlebells. Yeah. I'm going to uh, pick them up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and. Uh, 
I, when I was 15, I, 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 I lifted a weight one This is a true story. I lifted a weight one time in my life. I did a curl. I put it down. I said, I'm never doing that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we yeah. just did it to get the vein. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you see, you don't fuck with Norton. I, uh, I, uh, I look, I have my Unless reputation. <laughs> I feel like I'm having a family intervention. <laughs> I, uh, I, I my, my reputation, the woman does it. This is from the hospital, I swear to God. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't become Keith Richards. And no. <laughs> uh, and I forgot that I, I always wore uh, like a long sleeve shirt, uh, which is, you mm. know, a uh, junk alert, junk alert <laughs> in July. But, uh, you know, I feel good, too. Um, mm. You know, so uh, I missed the interview with Chris Christie. I missed an interview with, I overslept. With an interview with the governor of New Jersey today. Oh, I was supposed to go to, you know, when you do Caroline's, I don't know if you've done that, uh, Jimmy. Oh, many but, uh, times. <laughs> I, please, I'm a fan favorite. Uh, I love it. I can see the curtain when they draw it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. When they cut the room in half. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Aziz showed up. He wants to run his Wembley Stadium set. <laughs> 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 he wants to do it at 4 a.m. Okay. Can someone tell my cousin Tony to go home? <laughs> yeah. I, but I, I, um, I, I, you do, because I'm a sports guy, you do Boomer and Carton. And, and I guess uh, Boomer left. And uh, he left, you mean for good? I think he did, yeah. So they're, really? audi they're auditioning guys, and one of them is Chris Christie. <laughs> oh, shit. I, he's, I've heard he's not a bad sports guy because yeah. he loves sports. He I played a, I so, heard him on the fan, yeah. yeah. I played a celebrity softball game with him, and I was sitting next to him, and I looked like Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> 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 he is so chubby. So, uh, wait a minute, why'd Boomer leave? I didn't hear that. Uh, I think he realized he has $20 million in the bank from football. Like, what, what am I going to have at 4 a.m.? Oh, Matt Switch <laughs> with sense. Carton. <laughs> were they not getting along or no, no? No, I think they were. I think he just wanted to move on, you know? I like Carton, man. I, I like those guys. I did the Boomer Great Rose. Great sports. That. Yeah, we were, we were... No, you weren't there. For, I was there for something else. We had Anthony Bourdain, but... No, they are, like, great... They're a great sports team. They are. How yeah, long yeah. were they together? Like ten years. Ten years. Yeah. I couldn't uh, believe it. I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here. They hate each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you mean that can happen and people won't know it? Yeah, believe it or not, you can listen and think everything's hunky dory. <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen. I, I don't know anything about that personally, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, have, you have ten shots of wild turkey and call your boss a pelican, and everybody gets. Our... <laughs> we tried to make up on, on Twitter, and I think I, when I said, "Hey, at pelican." <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I had an, I would go in and talk to the governor of New Jersey, which would have been a feather in my cap, and I overslept. Oh my god! And here's the caveat: I made an interview uh, on time last week with High Pitch Eric's uh, uh, podcast. Oh my god! I was god. on time for that. You made High Pitch Eric and Jim Norton and Sam Roberts, but you missed the governor. <laughs> governor. Uh, yeah, so that, I mean, that's just a typical example in my life. It's like, I, why, why, I should just quit. When are your Carolines, by the way? Uh, uh, I don't know. I was supposed to plug it this morning. I forget. All right, let's uh, see. No, August third through the August fourth through the sixth. I August got third, third through the fifth. Third through the. All right, <laughs> so, <laughs> August third through the. Somewhere fifth. in that zone. Yeah, yeah. So go on the sixth. You won't see Artie, and go on the fourth. You'll have missed the first night, which would probably be the best. Uh, two one two seven five seven forty one hundred. Artie will sell out. He always sells out. August eleventh, Carnegie. Oh, that fucking place that we did together. Did we do that together in Pittsburgh or no? No, no. no but I'm doing that. Uh, uh, I would love to do it again, again with you because uh, we had fun in Tampa. We had Tampa together. That's right. When you guys were gonna, uh, Rob, Rob Kelly after the gig tried to get me to play in a band. And I said, "Oh no. shit!" Oh, is that when he was what he was doing? Uh, drumming, yeah. Yeah, Bob was doing the uh, the fucking gig for uh, Dennis Leary. Oh, uh, the FX thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He thought he was a great drummer after like two weeks of uh, playing the drums. <laughs> yes. He Meanwhile, should... he did a drum off at the house with Fred from Brooklyn, uh -huh. who, by the way, lost toes to diabetes and still played the fucking drum better than. <laughs> I'm gonna have to talk to him in a support group soon. Like, uh... oh shit! <laughs> Bob should call himself Keith Moon because he's an ass. <laughs> 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 Keith Moon Pond. <laughs> it's great how like, guys, uh, guys in this business get money for no reason. Like that, uh, that one guy built Fenway Park in his backyard because he met the. Uh, uh, he sold to Alan Coke in 1982 or something. <laughs> <laughs> became his manager. But like guys are uh, Fred from Brooklyn. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's one of my poker buddies. He's a buddies. listener, though. Yeah, he's one oh, of okay. my poker. He's he like plays a real listener. Poker yeah. down at the uh, yeah. down at my house and stuff like that. Those guys, those guys who call the show oddly have money. You wonder why they have money. Like Fred from Brooklyn, what are you doing? It's ten o'clock. You've been waiting for four hours. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they have weird. cash. Yeah, yeah, they do. So I like you know, uh, like guys from Tampa who come to shows and flip flops. Like, why do you have money? <laughs> uh, uh, you know, why, I don't, why would I go? I they figured go sh- it out. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe, wife... maybe it's called a work ethic. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. But you ever do that when you're flying though? Like you'll be in first class and you'll look and you'll see somebody. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you, but I'm, I'm saying that because like you look at them uh, like how the fuck is that? No, believe right, me, exactly. they're saying that about me yeah, too. That's you, that yeah, saying of course, you realize I, that. That's so funny. I, 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 Oh man! Man TV, I'm gonna match you for asshole uh, uh, name drop. <laughs> <laughs> so Man TV, Quincy Jones produced it. They invited, he invited us to a party in Bel Air. Guy produced Thriller. And out loud, I said, not even kidding, you have a built-in pool? <laughs> <laughs> a built-in pool? <laughs> like anybody in Valera is an above ground. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I said that once to Tommy Lee. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, yeah, you, got, you do have to assimilate uh, when you make, uh, when you start making a 80 grand a skimmer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what this reminded me of? It's so funny. The, the greatest thing about this business is, is you know funny people. And this is starting to remind me of the the, uh, the Matter Reese thing with me. You, we triple team Matter Reese. Oh my God, that was so funny. Oh, what, yeah. what, what made him oh. think? We weren't going to go find him. <laughs> I, dude, I yeah. don't know. When he starts reading off cue cards in front of 11 people. <laughs> <and a> fucking... <laughs> and then we're going to ask me for life advice. <laughs> yeah. So what do you do in a situation where are we fucking unloaded on him? I Why felt not? bad. Why not? Yeah. And, but they, you know, in fairness to Joe, they gave Joe such a bit. It's like Joe just didn't know how to handle that. No. And he actually came clean. He goes, yeah, I fucked up. I didn't do it right. Like, he admitted that he fucked it up. Like, he didn't, he's not holding fast. Right. He's right. like, dude, yeah. I, I should have just, you know, he realized that he fucked invited up. the three of us. And when he admitted he <laughs> fucked just up, went with it. When he admitted we were very comfortable with agreeing with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did fuck it up. But I'll be on that night on stage, which we just, we just, that was one of the most oh. fun nights I've ever had on stage. In <laughs> all of my years of doing stand up, that going back and forth, one it of the best great. nights I've ever had. That was And I never so made less fun. money for being more fun. <laughs> we got nothing. <laughs> Dude, yeah. I've never destroyed harder for free. <laughs> yeah. for, you were, you were in particular on fire. No, we all were, but I got scolded <laughs> for it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to guys, kill on I your really show. Want, yeah, I really wanted life advice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on, guys, you're laughing, but John Bonet is still dead. All right, good point. <laughs> Thanks for straightening us out. <laughs> and John Panet, too. Uh, yes, and John. She'd have, been, uh-huh. she'd have been pretty hot by now, I guess, right? Or John, she John could Benet have Ramsey. went um, the yes. elfin, elfin look the Olsen twins got, which right. was disappointing, or like really fat. Yeah, they turned out to be uh, aliens. I don't <laughs> I know what like the I like John Bonet in Little League. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, he got boy. Poor Joe got a world of shit for that. And he should have. He should have. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on, man. You're supposed to know how to handle those situations when you're a comic. That's, like, that's very why true. people pay to see you on the stage. Right. Right? Or, you yeah. know, if Joe Buck has a live show on HBO, you should say secondcock.com. <laughs> <laughs> in front of his children. <laughs> but Joe Buck loves you. everything. He <laughs> loves you. Well, I think part of it was that. I think he was doing some damage control. Like, uh, yeah. I don't want Howard to rail on me, too. So I'll say I love Artie. Were you on Howard? <laughs> oh, okay. Were you I still on, on Howard when that happened? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Howard loved it. It was just evil. Uh, but I wasn't trying to be evil. Um, Have really? you guys had no communication? I, I don't know as much no. about the stern world. Nothing, right? No. Uh, I stabbed myself nine times on heroin. when he called once, and uh, he said, listen, take care. Wow. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, no, it was like, I think he played, I think uh, he wanted, uh, he was, I think he already made up his mind that he wanted to do this politically correct show, and I didn't fit in. Okay. To Gwyneth Paltrow coming in and talking about her green drink for two hours, <laughs> and I'm the shirtless grimace a foot from like show us your tits. <laughs> uh, and I think he never wanted harm to come to me, but I think he, heroin did the job for him. I I, I couldn't go back to, for a while, and uh, we talked once, and uh, and then Jeff the drunk Curro called me at in <laughs> rehab. Did you see him at Robin when Robin was in the hospital? Yeah, no, but I went to go see him. I just missed. I, I told about Curro or Howard. <laughs> oh, Howard. <laughs> no, uh, I saw Howard. That's the only time I saw him. He didn't plan on seeing him. Right, just there. And uh, the security guard was a fan. It was so funny. Like, I walked up. He goes, he's up there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. And I said, really? And uh, I went up there and we couldn't. Uh, we laughed for like three hours, like this bullshit, like we were on the air again. And uh, then he, uh, th- th- you know, I think he just planned on. He has the ability to do that, but I, I know what he's talking about. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
I became a full-blown junkie on the biggest radio show of all time. And that doesn't help uh, the news, but uh, I've never been funnier uh, asleep. I, I was always <laughs> 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 Kathy. I think I told I told you this. Kathy, yeah, Kathy yeah. Griffin came on to talk about how she cried when she told her mother that uh, she got nominated for an Emmy. And she was crying, telling the story. And right in the middle of it, you hear an audible snore from me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I said, Ma, you know, uh, I've always been dreaming to tell you this. Dad passed away, but I got nominated for... <laughs> 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 Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> I've never so been funnier good. than that, uh, awake. <laughs> no, I mean, but the idea of falling asleep on a morning radio show, I mean, like, you just can't comprehend. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I did that too, Artie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they left and me talking, there. And, and both shows are not exactly is the Z Morning Zoo in Des Moines? <laughs> it really a lot is. of people are hearing you do. Oh that. my God! But your name was on it. It was like that would be like if Howard had <laughs> fallen asleep. That was your show. Yeah. To fall asleep on. Yeah, I, I hear you. <laughs> I'll thanks, be honest. Thanks for adding that in. <laughs> Us leaving you there was really fun. That was one of those things. That it was just funny. And yeah. I talk in my sleep. I've had girlfriends say I talk in my sleep, and I'm like, whoa! Like that's when the honesty comes out. Oh shit! And all of a sudden, I'm Anthony Cumia in Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want that kind of honesty coming out. I've no, had yeah. girlfriends say I talk in. My sleep, like you're reaching into my panties, yelling, "Where is it?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> when, when, you would punch think, your mother in the face. <laughs> no, a lot I want of people to wake me up and think Mark Furman was asleep. <laughs> 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 I thought I should say, when Kathy Griffin's interview's over, wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it amazing the fucking, the, the real fucking mental patients involved in radio are fucking, it's crazy. Yeah, 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 well, yeah, I was just yeah. saying, like, uh, with Howard, you have the same waiting room as the, uh, the um, well, all of us, as the uh, Christian channel. So you'd have naked Beetlejuice talking to a nun. <laughs> <laughs> Literally going, let's get drunk. <laughs> yeah, thank God stand up comics are so much more stable. Same, well, it really is the same fucking, the same it meshes. Demented, crazy people. Yeah, it meshes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. It's just, yeah. uh, but radio guys are, because they have to talk for so many hours, that's why there's all this infighting because you got three hours to kill. A guy says something, you got to respond. And then all of a sudden, you know, I, I would yeah. say to you, we, we, we talked about, I would say to you, like, uh, you, you know, would always, uh, you would do gigs and you would do sets at the cellar on weeknights. And I go, oh, we'd see you in the, each other in the elevator. How are you doing that? And you're like, well, I'm just living healthy. Right? I mean, I, remember, I would marvel at you doing a set at like nine o'clock at the comedy zone. But I would also marvel at you. I'd be coming in with Artie and I'm just <laughs> as tired and he's got, he's on heroin with sunglasses <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm literally bumping into him on the elevator. I'm like, wow. <laughs> We both made choices, and it's the exact same result. We're, we're barely making this fucking show. <laughs> Somebody's got to live it up around here. Oh, I, uh, That's so true, man. It is true, yeah. Like, you know, I, I, uh, well, you know, we're, we're, you know, we ended up here. Uh, I, uh, I, I really can't believe, like, I'm lamenting about the fact that I, I missed an interview with the governor. The governor. Yeah, that's okay. That's, You'll uh, get it again. You just do it again. Well, I might need to make a phone call in jail hit one day for some sort of reprieve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's good to have the governor on your side. <laughs> oh God, yeah, and, uh, you know, yeah, he has a, the, the, the pictures I have in that celebrity softball game and an, just an enormous ass. You can't. Oh, that, no is other that the way one where describe. he's got like the camel toe? Oh, yeah. fucking yeah. yeah, he looks like a Tweedledee. He's got fem He's got male camel toe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How yeah, many someone should have told him before he walked out of that fucking dugout. Yeah, I guess I could. That's not, you could have told him. <laughs> <laughs> They're crushing him everywhere. I mean, they. It was some guy, like last week, he was filling in for Francesa, and some guy called oh, him yeah, a fat called asshole. Up. They were booing him, at, I think, at the Mets game Mets this game. week. Like, yeah. just everywhere he goes. Well, he fat asshole him. could have worked for Francesa, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's interchangeable. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, I had a joke, too. I was going to say, you know, uh, you got me off heroin for a week. My drug dealer was in the Bronx, and there was, like, for three days, traffic at the Bronx. <laughs> 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 no, there, there's a, the picture. There oh, Look at him. He's, he's got good. Look at him. That's you don't go out in those pants. And and he, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Looking at the camel toe. Didn't he used to play baseball though? Like this picture of him in a baseball in, when he was in, in college in or whatever. Yeah. New Jersey. Yeah, he's uh, he went to high school with Chelsea Handler. That and, look, uh, that look only is good in baseball if it's black and white and you're running in fast motion. Yeah, <laughs> on the fucking bases. Yeah, he has a fucking Babe Ruth body. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that only works if, if blacks weren't playing yet. You get the, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, he, he was fun to talk to. He was trying to be like hip and cool. And he told me, yeah, that, yeah. He told me about the high school with Chelsea Handler. I said, any funny people come out of that high school? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, a, was it going to be sports or just it anything? It was going to be some sports, but then he's like this big opiate thing, you know. 
Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that would have been fun to get grilled on that. Uh, oh, he was going to ask you about it, you think? Yeah, I think he, I think he wanted to. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, good for him to not yeah, avoid yeah, it. Yeah. I was, uh, I was going to say, if you ever get another partner, Opiate and Anthony. <laughs> opiate and Anthony. Uh, I said, <laughs> that would be... <laughs> that would work with a camel toe. <laughs> I don't know if he really wants that job. Does he really want a job? And more, right? I think I he's think auditioning he for the job. Yeah. It's weird. It's almost like if you imagine having the responsibility of being the governor, and then you can just go on and talk about whatever you like. But it's, yeah. also, it's the same thing we were talking about with Wiener. Like the one <laughs> yeah. uh, There's a yeah. segue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. What's the? They want the power. Like, there's a power to being That's on what the it radio. Is. They every day. just want there's no to power still from have governor. <laughs> <What's more? laughs> That's an interesting contrast. Though, yeah. They want to have the voice still. Yeah, and they be want able people to, listening yeah, to them. Yeah, listen to me. Yeah, it's a no. narcissistic thing. Politics. Sure. Like, See, yeah. you guys were more blue collar. Howard did love like that, going to Danielle, the French place, and getting a table and shit like that. Oh, that was obvious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, uh, you guys could have got into Chili's anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and I still felt cool about it. <laughs> oh, look, we're getting a table of chilies. This place is full. I'm yeah, great. What is me sure we have your table the other way? Yo, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, this, this really was like the fucking, the gutter swamp fucking... Uh... <laughs> Well, I said, like, some of Howard uh, fans had jobs. It was the morning. You guys were the hardcore. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They Keep were you on your toes. Animals. Keep you on your what, uh, what was going on between you and John? Because I, I was with Stuttering John at the Comedy Cellar one night, yeah. and he's sitting at the table, uh, and he's telling me how he's going to kick your ass. If fuck, oh. he, He's sitting there, and he's going, if Artie walks in... Uh. Did that door, I will fucking kick his was ass. Was he kidding or no? Uh, no, he, no. Was, he was pretty serious. And then he left... So we had gone downstairs. Bill Schultz was hanging out. I think we went downstairs oh, yeah. to watch uh, the show. And, and John left or got kicked out or something. Man. And then I go back upstairs. <laughs> and then here comes Artie. Yeah. Artie comes in. And I'm like, fuck, man. That would have been awesome. Yeah. 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 Still was right. here. I would like to see that. He, what, what's the uh, just beef on there? It, just on it. He, he can't take it. He dishes out, but he can't take it. You know, he always thought he wanted the, that chair. So from the beginning, there was tension. And, Your uh, chair, you mean? Yeah, the, the, yeah. This, well, it was Jackie's chair, I guess, at the time. Yeah. But I, you know, and then I think he was. There was like sort of a thing going on there, and then we started doing the road together, and uh, you know, he, he had a very competitive thing, and then mm. on the air at the at the, at the po at my podcast, we were talking about how El Chapo looks exactly like. <laughs> yes, it really <laughs> does. <laughs> and so I started doing it. I did a two-hour bit stuttering Juan. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta move a kibble. I gotta move a I gotta move a lot of coke. <laughs> For two hours, it was just like a. Call me El Patrick. El Patrick. El Patrick. I call me Paul. <laughs> and, uh, the, El, El Chapo uh, coming out of prison and getting a job interviewing other uh, uh, kingpins. <laughs> <laughs> Pablo, did you ever actually leave? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love Dylan's face. <laughs> uh, and he got he got very mad at that. Can That's you, so. Wow. Funny. Could you imagine him getting mad at anything? That's so at funny. Anything? And then you Why? have to do a mea culpa with him. Oh, I love you. I love you. It's always I love you. I love you. I love you. Let's not because because when he gets in a battle of the wits, we would all beat him. Florentine, <laughs> me. It would be like you know it would, it would, we would throw no hitters against him <laughs> on the road. And uh, you know I'm like you know stick battling high pitch Eric or you know KZ. I don't know where it got to the uh, like physically. He wanted he wants to, to well punch because you. he's half Puerto Rican and half Danish. I was used to. Did you get any of the Danish? <laughs> <laughs> did you get any of the fucking Danish? <laughs> uh, all Puerto Rican. Yeah, he, yeah. Uh, But I, I, you know what's different? I love the guy. I, I'm, I have a lot of. We have stories where he's like an endearing guy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he can, uh, when, when you're on a jet blue flight with him and his hair is in your eggs because he falls asleep and he still has the long hair, it's like, how do you not love a guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he, he on Twitter said, I hear Jim and, uh, and Sam are bad mouthing me. Can you call? On he's, Twitter, like, he's going nuts. But like, I'm like, yeah. John, I texted him. I'm like, we're friends. You could have just texted me. What the yeah. fuck is, why, why did he bad mouth you? Yeah. I got to bad mouth you on the radio. What are you talking about? Right. He's one of those yeah. guys. He's almost like a fan. You know, when you meet a fan, and this is indigenous to some Philly fans. Uh, <laughs> they meet you and they like you because you're blue collar. I like you because you know you're you're, uh, you're a regular guy. Like, they basically sure. saying I like you because you're a loser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you talk to him for an hour, and then as so and, and as soon as you go, well, I gotta get a cab. Oh, big truck can't take the subway. <laughs> <laughs> they turn yeah, on you. Yeah, oh, 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 oh
John's like that kind of, but he's like a coworker. It's, it's, he's he's really, <laughs> uh, I love him. I want to say publicly, I love the guy. And uh, yeah. uh, El Chapo does look like him. <laughs> he uh, looks exactly funny. like him. Twitter, you can't go on Twitter, though, and take anything that they say about other people talking about you and stuff. Oh, I just tweeted something. Someone goes, Anthony, you should go out to California, go on Joe Rogan's show. Right. And I tweeted, I go, well, I guess I have to do that. The motherfucker won't come on my show uh, when he's in New York. And why is that? Obviously, that's, I, look, he's he's busy, he's this, he's that. He's but in New York, though. Look, he loves busy, you. Look, he's busy. He's busy. He I don't, you. No, I know that. that and, and I was totally kidding when I wrote that. Right, right. Like, right. I would never... I, I've only written nice things about Joe. I love Joe Rogan. We but have it's a context lot of with Twitter, yeah. But they, they see it, and people are like, oh, now you got a fucking problem with uh, Joe Rogan? I'm like... No, I'm just fucking goofing it's around. It's a written telephone game, and they want to start a feud. That's what know? they want to do. Like, yeah. Esther Koo, I guess, was on um, Ellis's show. Yeah, in and LA, I got, yeah. Someone sent a video and goes, uh, oh, man, Esther's, uh, Esther and Ellis are ripping you apart. Yeah. I'm like, what? And then you listen to it and go, there's not a second... Where she's ripping me apart. No, right. Esther, Esther likes you a lot. Yeah. She also likes me very much. She's a fucking good egg. Yeah, she, yeah I like Esther. Would, yeah, she's but awesome. I don't want to start that. fights. Is, no, is she a comic? She's a comic. Yeah, she's yeah. funny, man. She's really... Uh, oh, right. And she's mention, a comic. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, is she a comic? Right. What are you going to do? Is she a like... <laughs> oh, I've got some coke. <laughs> <laughs> how, many, how many condoms can you fit up your... <laughs> Your ass. <laughs> what a funny fucking uh, bit. A stuttering one, and uh, that, that, that ruined my relationship. A dumb pun. That's such a funny fucking bit, man. But yeah. but but he. Do, what makes it work is he. Do, El Chapo looks exactly like John. Exactly. Right. Well, the first time I saw his picture, I was like, "What the fuck is John do? What did John do?" <laughs> it's John with business sense. It, it looks. <laughs> 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 but you're right. How, how funny if John attacked me in the middle of a crowded comedy cellar? So it would And Dan been... Natterman's breaking us up. <laughs> Dan Natterman. <laughs> well, how long did I miss him by? Uh, minutes. It was oh, minutes. That would have been awesome. That would have been yeah, great. Yeah, that's why I was kind of like, oh, fuck. Should have well, found him. Yeah. yeah. Look who's well, here. Look who's here. Could you take him? <laughs> Uh, uh, I don't know. At this point, my body, my body's ravaged. From, <laughs> ravaged. In 1986, I think I got to tell you. Now it's like you know. Like, <laughs> so and I guess he was also pissed that uh, people were making fun of his run for uh, Senate. Okay, okay, okay. Stop right there. <laughs> okay. Stuttering John. Yeah. The guy. The guy who used to ask Ted Williams if he ever. No, Yogi Berra. If you ever got hit with balls in the face. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy who used to, uh, who said to uh, uh, Melanie Griffith, "How's your father Andy doing?" Okay, <laughs> <laughs> the guy who asked the, uh, the, ast the astronaut Tom Hanks played if he ever ran off a batch in the in the cockpit. <laughs> okay, wants to run for Senate, and as comedians, we're not allowed to make fun of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what the fuck? Grow up, man. I mean, what would you do? That's terrible. I mean, come on. That is that is. Yeah, we're gonna make fun of it, and I'll make fun of it again. But comics and radio people, we said this before you came in. All fucking mental patients. Like we all have weird. Achilles but heels or what comics, gets it. It's just crazy. Are yeah. comics as sensitive? Because radio people are super oh, sensitive. Oh, comics. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. comedians are. are. But we just don't show it as much. We don't have four hours a day to talk. And right. the funniest and guys. Yeah, the funniest is, guys are. I'm, you know? try, I'm trying to think who's more like twisted, weird. I might think comics are. But radio people can be really... Uh, oversensitive about things. Well, yeah. you know get where, butt hurt. Uh, yeah, you, yes, you really know where radio guys get on the weird side is, is uh, you know, the, the women thing. And I'm not, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about like <laughs> low level radio guys like in Wyoming who want to fuck the chick who works at the tire place. Right. Where she's, uh, and it looks like <clears throat> guys have started motorcycles on her chest. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and they, they, they never got laid and they really, they get weird. They get weird. Yeah, if they yeah. get to a bigger market you know, it, it becomes they're in jail forever eventually. Yeah. Uh, but comics, I think, get a little more, I don't know, cynical and jaded and don't do not do weird shit That's like that. That's true. Okay, yeah. yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah, more jaded and cynical, right? I think I think radio guys are more insecure about losing their spot because, like, there's... In, in Cheyenne. Yeah, if yeah. Every there's, plenty fucking... of, there's plenty of comics, but, like, like you can just... Go be a Dude, comedian, Dude, every three right? months, a... your job is in jeopardy right. when the ratings books That's come right. out. That's right. It's like it drives you <laughs> batshit. Well, and... my first my first ratings book at Howard, I, I didn't realize this until one of my asshole buddies pointed it out. I was a big <laughs> fan. He goes, you know what? Well, hold on. How are you saying that? <laughs> <laughs> <One of> my... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me start again. I, no. Uh, the first ratings book comes out, and I'm, I'm happy I got the job. And uh, my buddy goes, you know, you can, the show can only go down. 
And who's going to get blamed for that? Oh, <laughs> shit. Right? So that first book comes out, I'm like, oh, my God. I, like, Thank God it was fine. It was number one again. But if it was number four. <laughs> oh, man. Like, someone, like Tom Giussano is going to come to the room and go, what's different? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd have been gone in a yeah, second. Well, yeah. You know, it's like, uh, but uh, I guess it was steamrolled. That was the most nerve-wracking thing in terrestrial radio was the ratings coming out. And you'd be yeah. like, all right, can we... Oh, and then you'd hear, well, our demo was good, and this oh, uh, they so oversaturated this Harlem with <laughs> books, so the fucking rap station did well. But yeah. And then you're just like, do I have a fucking job for three yeah. more months, yeah. you that's, fuck? That's yeah. why people don't understand, like, there's nothing to worry about at Sirius. Unless you yeah, go crazy yeah. in Times Square. Yeah, speak for nothing. yourself. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. You talk to the two guys who had something to worry about. <laughs> did you have to wait in security at the desk like I did today? Four hours. The times yeah. they are right. changing. Yeah. Things are fine if you don't photograph a woman or f treat your chest like a pincushion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to try really hard to get that ratings book anxiety. It's serious. Yeah. I'm, really tearing, uh, I'm tearing Schmirnoff labels all and pouring them in the water at 48th and 9th at <laughs> quarter of six. No one will smell this. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. But it is amazing what you can get away with in this job too. Like just in, being a performer oh, of some oh, sort, man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. We have more shots what, than you, yeah. know, you know what's hilarious? They were basically saying you could say the N word on air, but not off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just told them earlier uh, in the show. I, I got kicked off. I got kicked off of Twitter. Uh, recently, and what a badge of honor! I would love that. Just get kicked off of Twitter. Yeah. But when I got fired from here, yeah. For what I tweeted, Twitter <laughs> didn't. Kick me off then. Right, right. But well, you're and I got up. fired for it. You're right. moving but, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm moving up. <laughs> <laughs> I love if someone thinks they're going to make you mad if you're a comic for 30 years. They go, I'm defriending you. Well, I mean, uh, I'll barely get down that fourth Sicilian slice. This <laughs> you really worked up about it. Yeah, you're defriending me at baby shower. <laughs> Unfollow. <laughs> I get that sometimes too. Unfollow. Total boycott. Yeah. I'm selling all your your, your DVDs, really? Oh, you blocked me? <laughs> oh, real freedom of speech guy. Yeah, Do you know what's funny? That too. Like, but what, your freedom of speech to call me a fucking lump of shit yeah. is something I, have, I should deal with? Well, my father was the universe. Uh, my father. <laughs> 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 fucking Jimmy. My, oh, my father was a low-level mafia guy. If he found out I had 300,000 followers, he'd punch me in the face. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> or remember, remember when friend wasn't a verb? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to friend you. Yeah, good. Uh, blow me. Cool. <laughs> Tell it to Matthew Perry. <laughs> it does, uh, you know, it's funny. It does get to you on, on some level. You know, somebody said they did something very funny to celebrities. Somebody said that they would go to celebrities and just tweet blocked at the celebrity <laughs> who never followed them. And it would annoy them. Like, people would go, like, why? What are they <laughs> like, Antonio Sambato probably really is mad at that. <laughs> yeah. so that's that's playing right, yeah. on their insecurities. Yeah, I've been yeah. blocked by a few people. Nancy Grace is the main one. who, And I don't even blame her for blocking me. Like, I, she was the one what celebrity. Is it? She was like, bombshell tonight. <laughs> Jim Norton block. <laughs> was it? It on the, was it after her appearance on no, your show? No, it was way before that. Oh, what really? happened? Well, I just I had, I had bashed her many times publicly. I think she sucks. <laughs> she started crying on on your show, right? No, uh, not crying, but she kind of just walked off. She's got a gig. It's serious now. Yeah, oh, so I'm hoping we can cross promote. Yeah, oh, we should get God. her back on the show. She called us. Uh, this is like our like our third week of doing the show or right. something. And she went on the View and said, "I didn't know I was going to do an interview with Beavis and Butthead." Oh, yeah. oh nailed! Yeah, because no. you're like, hilarious. Because your Fuck demographics yeah. watching the View. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do the obstructed View. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, she, uh, yo, she would get on the fucking on, on whatever show she was on. What was that? Like, CNN? Yeah, yeah, the hour. And just be like, the Tot the Mom! <laughs> Another episode with Tot Mom! Yeah, 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 just Casey up. Anthony. Uh, uh, big tits of hers. Boy, she's with her <laughs> lawyer, dude, right? She's dating her lawyer. I know. She, I could have fucking would you? got her, I bet. She's dating In a, a lawyer. second. I'll just be like, Joe, keep uh, keep the kids away. That for would have a while. been great, by the way. You should have done that. <laughs> oh, invite her over. I because she was uh, she was looking for a place to live for a while. She said, "I got room." No, I remember you tweeted. Casey her. Anthony yeah, was yeah. tweeted. No, well, she was thinking, but she found you were too emotionally unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's great about Nancy Grace? She's like seventy-two. It would get your average of people chicks you're fucking. It really age. would. Oh, yeah, yeah. your average age no, for not, St. Peter's. No, not Nancy Grace. <laughs> uh, Casey Anthony, I want to fuck oh, the baby oh, killer. I'm sorry. Not Nancy yeah. Grace. Oh, Nancy Grace. I apologize. Thank you. Thank you. 
disgusting. That, like probably Nancy the worst Grace. insult you've ever given me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that I would fuck Nancy Grace. Wait a minute. Good one, Needle Nose. <laughs> uh, well, uh, shit. Yeah, she. Uh, I, I would. I have no problem. I would absolutely, if the things happen, I would fuck Casey Anthony. What if she was? What if she's found over my house? Who cares? I don't have kids. What if she was found guilty. She's found not guilty. Oh, right? I still wouldn't care. You wouldn't, he, he'd marry her. If she was found guilty, he'd marry her. <laughs> yeah. By the way, let me not My forget plugs. Uh, Anthony Cumia every day, Monday through Thursday on uh, Compound Media. Of course, as you know, you can catch Eastside Dave, uh, Gino Bisconti, and Aaron Gavin Berg. McGinnis. Gavin McGinnis. Yes, yes I forgot. Gavin, Gavin is a Tlaib great show. Starks, our black guy. Pat oh, Dixon. <laughs> Pat Dixon. Pat who's, Dixon does and, the cr- New York City crime report. And uh, Anthony's new Twitter is Anthony Cumia XYZ. Of course, Artie is Artie <laughs> Twitter on Twitter. Artie and, Quitter. And uh, August, here in Caroline's, August 3 through 5, go to uh, ArtieQuitter.com for his dates, but Caroline's, Artie's going to sell out. We're going on these the no curtain in the middle of the room shows. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, two one two seven five seven four. Just don't forget. I just want to make sure we're plugging definitely. properly. Uh, but we'll, we'll still keep chatting. I just I forget yeah, the I'm plug s- sometimes. I'm still going to that. I, yeah. I am too, but I haven't seen you live in so long. I, yeah. I want to come and see your new set. Uh, I, well, uh, you know, you're gonna have to wait the next uh, show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see Gilbert. I see 1978. John oh, Christ, is he is so. That show you guys did. Uh, Together, it was the live version of his podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was Caroline's. Also. Yeah, it was that yeah. kicked off the festival. <laughs> God, oh. yeah, kicked off the fe- It was so fucking funny, yeah. like, like hurting, hurting, laughing funny. Uh, well, you know, he really is. Have you ever done the road with him, Jim? Like a real show with Gilbert, like, where you guys are, like, you know, co handling or whatever, and, and see how he uh, really uh... Many years ago, you know, I, I've done, uh, I've gotten to know him from the comedy cellar. I've driven him home a lot, and I've just spent time talking to him. And uh, it's it's so I that guy. Oh, so, I and then off stage, how are you? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, he could oh, turn it on. I mean, if you if you were watching, uh, if you were in ninth, whenever it came out, uh, ninety one, you're watching Aladdin, and you go, <laughs> the genie. And the parrot. One's going to commit suicide. (laughs) 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 Which which way would you predict? And he can really, he really has a sweetness to him. Where like uh, you know, he's I think he's so funny. Uh, But and uh, he uh, he came with me once. He really is as cheap as you (laughs) (laughs) Uh, in Brazil. Uh, But but he really is the cheap thing is not even exaggerated. No, he's a chiseler. I picked up. uh, (laughs) I, I picked up his uh, his bag because he was just standing there waiting for me to pick up his bag. Like, uh, and uh, a, a zipper was open, and all of these non dairy creamers oh, no. from our diner He's that we had eaten at were, just went all over the like like he like he you know, wasn't even embarrassed by. It. He just started laughing hysterically. He stole like fifty creamers. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't even know what to say to this. <laughs> what are you going to do with them? He's crazy. He's a fucking pack rat. Yeah. So, wow, uh, that is, but, yeah, that's but, a whole other thing. When we yeah. get together, it's not about the creamers at that point. No, no exactly. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It's but not, right? When no we way. get together and tell stories, it is fun, man. I'm glad that, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he yeah. knows everything about, like, old movies and yeah. right. actors. And so and, do I. I have that yeah, knowledge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that, that, lifetime that, of wasted youth. <laughs> I didn't even know that was in the festival, that show. And it, it, it won best, uh, the Village Boys voted the best show in the festival. <laughs> it was so, if you were there watching that live, you saw something amazing. It was yeah. so fucking funny. Man. But you know, it's like, I do have new shit, and, but, but like, Jim, like, the, the Trump stuff, like, what do you do? Like, where do you stop? Do you even do it? Like, <laughs> I, it's I such some, a yeah. beach, I do too. It's such a beach ball coming in. It's like, what, it's so crazy. It's, it's easy what and hard to What do you joke about his hair, right? I, yeah, I, I really do. go, I open up and I go, uh oh, careful, the president might fire everybody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's they so laugh. Funny. It's really funny. <laughs> like, what do you? It's almost like it's hard and easy to write that. Yeah, everything has been exhausted yeah. with it. It's like there's what new angle are you going to get off of Donald Trump? No, no I, I just tough. I don't kill him on stage. Like I, I make fun of him a little bit and some uh, of the stuff he said. But I also say that I don't hate him, and, and then people should, if you're going to hate him, hate him for the right reasons. Yeah. And I try to call out a little of the bullshit in the anti-Trump stuff. Like, I think a lot of it is just they think they're supposed to. So I I, I, I do it that way. I mean, it literally yeah, but... is. And that's ballsy, too, because I, I do it the same way. But I think, you know, it, it really costs people work. Like, that's the yeah. thing that pisses me off so much is the hypocrisy of, like, uh, it costs people work, acting jobs. It's just saying you yep. kind of like them. You know? I've seen people uh, just back away in fear from a conversation. Right. On my show, uh, you know, comics will come on or somebody and be like, 
I uh, hate yeah, that. I, yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about that. I'm yeah, not. Why gonna, not? They're petrified. Right. Yeah. Like I can't even blame them though. Yeah. yeah like, the because it really like, does you know, fucking man happen. Man up. But if you. But you're right too. If you're just an actor, not a comic who could create work. Yeah. Yeah. It's a legitimate concern. You know. Yeah, for actors, it's hard. We talked about this. Uh, who, who do we have in when we talked about the, the acting? And, oh, oh, fucking Steve Gutenberg was in yesterday. Yes. Uh, and it's just a big it's, piece uh, of his. Well, I'm yeah, quite frankly, oh, no matter who's president, it's going to be hard for him to get. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hear he has a big, juicy, heavy cock. I hope I didn't say that too gay. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Him and Jack Warden took a schwitz together and they did the old joke, like, you know, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I look like Foster Brooks. Uh, oh, your, your water has too I much like ice it, in it. I like it cold. Yeah, yeah, you do. Um, so, uh, like, like supposedly Jack Warden and him were at the Friars Club, uh, Guttenberg, and the, the Guttenberg did the joke where uh, you know, let's see who's longer, and he said, "I'm only going to pull out enough to win." He told that story. <laughs> but it was about yeah. Milton Berle. The true story is Jackie right, Gleason the same, said that to Milton Berle. The same joke, but yeah. Jackie Gleason was, was not in the contest. No, he said that uh, to Milton Berle. Milty, uh, I heard he said Milty just pulled out enough to win, and I believe it because he was like a guy's guy, Jackie. Gleason. Oh yeah. yeah, he didn't want fucking broads around. Like he, you know, he wanted yeah. to just hang with the boys and, and prob- smoke. Probably hadn't seen his cocks since before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's true. He probably was like, ah, oh, fuck. It, it was with Foster. It was with the guy from uh, F Troop. That contest. Oh, I, that uh, guy. Yeah, yeah. Do you yeah. know I just met him? I went to the Gilbert screening. Go I did an interview, and I, I, you know, you're fucking finishing show business when you get cut out of the Gilbert documentary interview. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was there uh, too. Uh, Larry Storch. Larry, Larry Storch. Larry Storch. But you mean the other guy? Yeah, no, it's not. It's the other guy. Yeah, yeah. the the, the For, other guy had a huge dick. Oh, Forrest something. B- uh, Bob Crane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the, the two Indians. The two Indians. Bob yeah. Crane from Hogan's Heroes did. Remember, he would film himself yeah. having really? sex. Bob Crane had a big dick. Yeah, I thought he just was a perverted motherfucker. No, he had one. a big cock, and he would film himself <laughs> fucking girls, and he got killed in some weird circumstances. He had a tripod. I know that. Yeah, he was beaten to death with a tripod by uh, his partner, the guy who used to, you know, yeah, go and yeah. uh, get the girls with. Do you know how awkward it is to hold a tripod and beat <laughs> someone to death? <laughs> <laughs> fucking keeps folding on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, you know, if, if being on Hogan's Heroes is not enough excitement for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> just think though, like what he would have thought of today where you just hold your phone up and take oh my video. God, like he had to break out equipment like a production was going He'd on. He'd be Scott Peterson today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, uh, yeah he, he was, a, what a weirdo. Like, I, I read, yeah, he was a weird guy. Uh, autofocus is a, a good mm. job by Greg Kinnear and well, I guess Willem Dafoe plays the other guy. Uh, but some of the creepiest scenes I've ever seen in my life, like, like, uh, you know, how bad do you want an Oscar, Greg Kinnear? He just starts jerking off. <laughs> this is really, this is really hot. And I'm going like, you know, no, I, I'd say the director, no, I'm, I quit. Yeah, I quit. Yeah, I can't <laughs> oh, he, was, he was actually doing it. Yeah, he would go in there and he's like, this is really hot. And Willem Dafoe, you can almost see Willem Dafoe, the guy who, you know, did anything, going, I'm not, I don't want this part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, this is too creepy. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, uh, <laughs> I, I, if Willem Dafoe is saying it's too creepy, that's fucking creepy. I told, I, I did this awful shitty movie called Boat Trip with Will Ferrell and Cuba Gooding, and we shot in Cologne, Germany because of money. And there was a scene, <laughs> me and Will Ferrell play gay Cologne, guys. Cologne, Germany, it smells good there. <laughs> oh, Chip. Uh, we exhausted okay. that show. Yeah. And I, uh, I saw... <laughs> I said to the director, they were going to be 20 grand for the day, and at the end it says, Artie kisses, Will and Artie kiss on the lips. And I said to the director, listen, don't waste your time. I have Italian uncles, I'm not kissing any guy. Uh-huh. I pulled the uh, Ke- Kevin Hart. And, uh, <laughs> the Kevin Hart, what's that? Uh, uh, Kevin Hart said he would never kiss again. Like, one of the, <laughs> got, almost got into a fist fight with the director for making him kiss a guy. Really? And uh, I have that same homophobia. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I said, I, I got no problem with anybody, but I'm not going to kiss Will. And I know Will will do anything. So don't yeah. get me over to fucking Cologne, Germany with two layovers and give me 20 Gs and expect me to do it. We go to Cologne, Germany. I got a layover. I'm on the Autobahn with Vivica Fox and her gay assistant who made me hate gay people more. <laughs> You got a man! You got a man! Oh. <laughs> Just the two of us on the Autobahn. We get there, and sure enough, it comes time for the scene. He goes, you're going to do it, right? I said, I told you. Oh, shit. I said, I'm a guinea from Jersey. I'm not kissing on my lips. So Will, for an hour and a half, is on camera trying to kiss me on the lips. And he's pulling me toward, <laughs> towards him. And the film is going... <laughs> 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 They're wasting film. And finally, they let him kiss me on the cheek. And at the last second, he got me on the lips. And uh, <laughs> that's a fucking hot story, dude. Yeah, but oh, they, uh, is, am I the only cock that's not soft in this room right now? <laughs> but uh, thank God there was an intern in the shot and they couldn't use it. I oh, said, wow, there you go. I said, that's karma. 
Do you yeah. know Will Smith said he regretted? I think he said in Six Degrees Separation he wouldn't kiss the other actor, and he said that was one of his regrets that he wished he had. He agreed oh, to suck in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. He's a very good actor. Uh, that was a good movie. I got built one time by someone who said they were Sidney Poitier's son. <laughs> no. Come on. Dad, you? Kidding. He's kidding. I'm kidding. Oh. I'm just being cute. Oh, I got it. It's funny. Someone says that, you look up and you realize who said it. Oh, because he does get built by people that say they're oh, yes. uh, so other people. people. What yes, a good move, though. A great move, because you're playing on that, like, rich white people guilt and, like, you know. And yeah. He's the, he, and he was always the black guy to go to. Like, well, I'd like Sidney Poitier, yeah. Uh, uh, the the question was always, would you want your daughter to marry Charles Manson or City Pie? And I go, of course, City Pie. So that was a what a great <laughs> fucking move on a con man's part. That was a great movie too. And was that Stocker Channing and Donald Sutherland were in that? Right. Yeah. Jesus. Stocker Channing right before she started to look like a wallet. <laughs> 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 I really bought her as a high school student in Greece. <laughs> yeah, really. You can buy her now. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, don't give me a kiss, Kanicki. I'm in menopause. <laughs> <laughs> what a great reference. I actually stopped laughing to say great reference. <laughs> I became Steve Allen. <laughs> Kanicki. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, she was a little too. But then again, Olivia Newton John was in her fucking 30s. Yeah, yeah but she. Uh... <laughs> now she looks like she was born in the 30s. <laughs> what happened to her, actually? She was she got some disease, uh, like Crohn's uh, disease or something. She had breast cancer. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if she's still fucked tell? up. So I'm glad I made fun of her for a funny time. I think. No, I've seen her in interviews recently. She's still around. Yeah, she still looks good. You know. Good, Did they find her husband who disappeared or some shit? Like yeah, he tried so, to, she had yeah. some crazy. But you know the weird thing: John Travolta is equally attracted to her now as he was then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. He actually jerks off thinking about her husband. Around, like, Poor Johnny T. Hey, you want to work out together? Yeah, it's good. It's three o'clock in the morning in fucking Dallas. That doesn't seem fishy. <laughs> Sit in the steam room with the guy from fucking Greece. <laughs> <laughs> Holy fuck. Uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 you know, like you're not chasing pussy if you have time to put a pilot uniform on <laughs> and land the 737 in your backyard. Did you ever theorize that he liked that plane because you could have a co pilot and then you could also uh, put that and then do whatever you want for a little while and no one would know? Like, you, if you're oh. the only two people on a plane at 35,000 feet, pretty secure. <laughs> You could suck each other off. Exactly. Yeah. I'm guessing a exactly. co-pilot, too. My, uh, yeah. Uh, like yeah. Reading, uh, uh, my cock will fall down. Put my cock in your mouth before <laughs> yeah. putting it in a child's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what a great setup, though, man. If you got to fuck it. Well, you just take someone on the plane before you take off. <laughs> We're, hey, we're, we're really going into it. <laughs> sure, why not? Jimmy's, Snakes on a plane took less time to figure out. <laughs> Jimmy's fan fiction over here. Yeah, <laughs> what, what things you do on a plane when you don't want everyone to know. How to fuck John Travolta on a plane? <laughs> he is so bad at uh, in Pretend, movies, oh, uh, like, like pretending not to be gay. They, yeah, <laughs> I, remember, I remember Patrice talking about uh, his big comeback. Like, like Pulp Fiction was his comeback, right. and it's like it wasn't a comeback. It was the only good movie he made. Yeah. Yeah. Like everything he's done since then right, right. and before them, uh, then kind of sucked. That's a good point. Like, come back. Usually, all those guys are making good movies. Like, like, how could look who's talking to not get me something? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 right. He, he got offered a guy like Tarantino comes along with into nostalgia. Yeah, and uh, get gives him a part. You know, it's and like, then yeah. he pumped out after that just fucking shit. That and, that yeah. stupid Scientology movie and pump checks into his bank account. It's, like, it's a shame, but yeah. pump come in his ass. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Like those movies, like phenomenal Michael. Like, come on, like chicks want to go see it. Like, oh, yeah, on. yeah, chick movies and what stuff. What else has he done since uh, Pulp Fiction? I mean, there was, Michael. Well, you know what? He was good in Get Shorty. He was really good. Get in that. Shorty. Yeah. That was kind of a cool role. Yeah. Remember when he was Michael the Angel? Oh, the Angel. Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael. Ugh. What's that about? He's that. an angel. He's you, an you, angel. You know enough. Yeah, that's that's, that's all you really need to know. And then, of course, my favorite of all time, Face Off. Oh. Face Off. Oh. You know what? Oh. The technology is good, but I, I love it. The, the interviews for that are so funny because fucking Nicolas Cage is so mad that he set up a great character for for him to mimic. He goes, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and Travolta's getting all accolades. And uh, Travolta, like you could tell the, the egos of actors, Cage is really mad in the interviews. Going, well, I mean, I gave him every, you know, I gave him, he gave me nothing. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Like, I mean, he really was pissed off about it. It's <laughs> like double bad because it's Travolta yeah. acting like Nick Cage. But yeah, so it's, it's like, right, yeah. It's yeah. bad cubed or squared. 
And you think he's going to fuck square. his daughter? And then, like, you know, that gets Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, that, but he, doesn't he fuck the wife or something? Uh, how about Travolta in, in the read throughs for the script? Could we make it his son? <laughs> 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 but it doesn't fit the character. No, it would. He's evil. Right. Yeah. He's terrible. That's, you know, to digress, that's what John got pissed off. Stuttering John auditioning. This, he, he got really mad at me and Fred. Auditioning for The Tonight Show. They, they, they gave him celebrities to uh, introduce. Okay, one's Nicolas Cage. He says the N-word in his audition for The Tonight because he can't pronounce Nicholas. He says, Nicholas Cage! <laughs> Nicholas. And he, he submits it. He oh, submits that. Like it's, the N-word is in the... <laughs> oh, my God. He, he's got a speech in He gets the single most coveted uh, voiceover job in the history of television. Yeah. And he doesn't think that... you could. We can't goof on that. He says Nicholas Cage. <laughs> did, he, did he stutter in the intros or no? I don't no, remember. No, not on Leto's they, TV show, really. Well, it's clear they had to retake him. Yeah. You know, sometimes. And he made him a writer, which was just a, you know, That's a, a gimme thing. I used to see him when I'd go out there and do on a show. He'd always yeah. bump into John. Yeah, again, he was doing again, that all again, the time. Again, nice guy, but, you know, he, and we were really good friends, but he's got it. He would give it, but he couldn't take it. That was the problem. You know? mm. Yeah, and you got to realize when you fuck up or you do something crazy, like, the, the other, your friends are going to goof on it. It's right, part of it. Right. We make fun of Keith Robinson stroke and he doesn't, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, it is what it is. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, exactly. What are you going to do? But that's it. Like, like busting balls and fucking uh, it's a lost goofing start. on your friends it's and a everything. Lost start. Yeah. That, that table at the cellar is so, di I mean, is you know, it's mm. like Yankee Stadium has a crate and barrel. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. can have, to have wedding showers at the seventh inning stretch. It's like, call it fucking <laughs> Pepsi Field, you know? The, the cellar table should just be like, you know, okay. It's a guy code table. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, there's not the same uh, venom that yeah. they used to be. Someone said uh, the other day on my show, they were saying that uh, this girl was angry because uh, she wasn't getting support in the stand-up comic community. Oh. And I'm like, I'm like, could you imagine yeah, with the word community, that there's a, a stand-up comic community? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and I'm like, we I saw the whole thing. <laughs> they never actually go on stage. I, it's uh, all just sitting around talking about how they're comics and who's good and bad and judging uh, everything. But they never actually get up because they have nothing. You're I've right. never been wanting to be, if I'm in it, I want to be kicked out. Right. <laughs> Community. What are you doing on, uh, on the next season of Crashing? Uh, that, well, you, you, should, you should tweet the community. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I'm in like uh, again. I was in five of eight last year. I think I'm in six of eight this year. So oh, okay, great. It's actually uh, the appetite was feeding off what other people have found. Like uh, I'll write my own uh, loser uh, stuff. You just have to watch my life. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I start shooting next week. And, uh, yeah, we're going to do, you know, it's like uh, the, the, the judge has been very good to me and patient. Six and, episodes. Uh, Amazing. Yeah, so, uh, I, you know, we just continue with me trying to toughen up Pete, and he tries to save me with, like, interventions and so stuff. It, I was so pissed off at uh, at crashing because uh, I, I, I read Apatow's tweets and everything, I'm like, Fucking guy! It's <laughs> yeah, like again, a, he, he, I, I'm not political. He never right. brings that up, and I, I don't really, I don't really care. If the guy gave me a job, but I'm like, fuck this, fuck that show, fuck that. And then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna watch it. He hires everybody. Me and Jimmy had a. I watched the fucking thing. Yes, and it was cool having it's me and so you on the screen. You know? no, I was you mad. Like, did you like? The show I then? loved it. Oh, yeah, it's I really watched good. the whole thing. Like yeah. I watched it all in a, a night, one night, yeah. and I'm like. Motherfucker, What's I wanted that? to not like this because I I was so mad at Judd's like bullshit on Twitter. But yeah. well, you know, you it's, 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 Twitter's a dangerous uh, in every way. But oh, really? Is it? I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you Took me three off. years to get back in this seat. <laughs> <laughs> but what's cool is like he did, like what Judd did is like like it was it's cool that me and you have a scene together in a show. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and me and Atel have the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, uh, that part is fun, and Judd is very cognizant of that. He lets us. <laughs> But but uh, I uh, I have you know he just l lets the it's a guy with power yeah and I've been on he's got four cameras rolling all thirty five millimeter they never stop they shoot it like a play so you see the wow. difference the difference between a guy in Hoboken who gets money from the Russian mafia to do a film <laughs> and uh, what <laughs> uh, and, and, and a guy with power and they give him money and executives on the set not allowed to talk <laughs> wow and uh, you know that's that's I've never been involved with something like that before. that was that's a fun art. scene that I'd is. love to do another art if you could make it happen <laughs> <laughs> no but you riff, you riffing at noon in the strip club and showing the, yeah. And Pete is really good I about, love Pete. Uh, yeah, about the fact that like when comics that are, you know, peers of all, all of the community, 
Uh, <laughs> the community. The older community now. Uh, he sort of lays back and uh, you guys do your thing. You know, it was fun. Um, but uh, That's awesome. That was yeah. so much fun. I mean, I'd love to do it again if you have any influence <laughs> over there. At uh, well, guess what? You there is a part. No, uh, he's from it. That he's from a very different part of stand up. Like uh, that, you don't know. You realize there's forty thousand guys that you never heard of who are comics. Who judge you mean? Like the, uh, <laughs> or Pete. Uh, Largo. Oh that yeah, Largo scene. You know, um, there's a lot of guys. You like I've been a comedian for thirty years. I never heard of a guy who's got like eight specials coming. Yeah, six hundred thousand Twitter followers. <laughs> right. You're like, there's a whole nother world. Right, that right, I right. Not yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, uh, he's part of that too. You know, and. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's fun because to a mainstream show like that coming along the floor in your lap, and I got some blood work back and, you know, it's going to be good for the last hurrah. <laughs> <laughs> How is your blood work? Are you all right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I gave a urine sample that had a worm in it from a tequila. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I lucked oh, out, man. I, I got the, my liver enzymes when I went in. It was like crazy. And my cholesterol level was uh, uh, Babe Ruth's lifetime sucking percentage. The, the, the doctor was a sports fan. <laughs> Everything went down in a day. So I, I uh, no, good, this yeah. operation I just had, uh, I'm going to be healthier, he said. You're going to feel better. And uh, you just got to stop abusing yourself. But um, not verbally. Do you ever think of it though? Like, do you ever think like, all right, man, I've had, a, I've, I've taken a lot of shots across the bow. I know I have, you know. Uh, no, I know. <laughs> but, but, do you, but do you ever think of it like, man, I, I just gotta fuck it one day, just go fuck it, I'm done doing all that stuff, and like just kind of move forward? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny when, when I've been in three relationships that were five years apiece, and you think that's gonna. <laughs> That's gonna work until these bitches make you choose between heroin and them. <laughs> no, I, I, I don't know. I think that's gonna save me, and then it doesn't because it's the wrong person. I, I don't know. I, I, I have not figured it out. I have not figured out life clearly. Yeah. Uh, and um, I don't think a person can save you from anything. You right. Like, I do. Like another per maybe temporarily, you yeah. might get your shit together because you know. You want to keep fucking her? A lot of my buddies are like, you know, went the way I would have went if I didn't get lucky working construction. They're like, they're trying to take me down with these young girls. Oh, you know, uh, you guys are, don't like the same movies. What are you going to talk about? And I go, listen, Anthony, I'll make you a deal. I have a lot of Anthony friends. Uh, I said, uh, I have none. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I said, uh, I'll make you a deal. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll talk about Animal House with you and I'll fuck her. <laughs> uh, but, oh my God, that's so true. <laughs> all I have, all I have is, is comedy in a way. And like that old guy says in Punchline, I'm in love with the lady comedy. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh no. that worst line yeah. ever. It oh, is, because oh, he's, cry he's crying. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, oh, part of me is terrible? afraid if I get better, I'm not even going to have that. Like, I'm just going to be an annoying guy telling you not, you know, drinking's a dead end street. No, you know what? I, I, I understand that. You think that all of a sudden the demons make us funnier, like, without them. Right. I'm not me as a comedian. If I stop fucking do, do, doing all this sexual shit. But it's not true. It's almost like that stuff blocks. Even mm. though I've used it to be funny and yeah. you've used it, that but stuff blocks. I don't blocks. think what you do uses I think you're just saying, look, I'm being honest about my life. And I, I mean, look, Jim, what you do, there's a lot of people who would make that not funny. <laughs> you're a funny uh, yeah. guy. You're a funny okay. guy. You're able to make crazy shit funny. It's a, that's a talent, you know. Well, I, I don't want to be too funny. That's why I, you know, keep drinking. <laughs> wow, right. Well achieved. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you could have you made an exception to the rule here today. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, shit. Hard to drink yeah. in the morning. Hold on, uh, <laughs> it is. <laughs> you just open the bottle. It's just as easy. Uh, when we were doing afternoons at NEW, I would have a couple of beers behind the monitor. Yes. Why not? And, what do you, you fix an airplane drink? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, you know, come on. Man. Yeah. And then when we uh, we went to mornings, I really did have this kind of a. Uh, can I even do radio without? Yeah. I wasn't getting falling down drunk, but a little buzz it's was hard. nice. The man and it's like, hard. Yeah. But then you know, got into it, and it was what it was. What it was. It was uh, <laughs> we we had a great time. With it. But I, I thought I could that get drunk too. at seven a.m. Oh God, yeah, that was even me at some. I can't fucking get drunk in the morning. Can't do it. And then you realize it's like life is all for everything. Like, you know, if you get success in this business and you're, you know, you're drinking on the job, everything a guidance counselor told you is wrong. And you go, <laughs> if I have a kid, what I'm going to tell him? 
<laughs> the, reason, the reason you're in private school is I got drunk on the fucking air. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a high school dropout, and yeah. I would come in and talk about being pissed on the next morning. Yeah. No one ever told me that's going to make you a lot here's, of money. Here's your Manhattan apartment. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but here is the difference. Like, There's a lot of people who would really not make that funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know those Chuck Berry tapes? I've jacked off to them. All right, here's a check, Mr. Norton. There you go, Mr. Norton. I would, Brilliant. You know, I would combine the two. I would show my, my, my eight-year-old kid, Chuck Berry, pissing in a chick's mouth and going, that guy wrote Johnny B. <laughs> <laughs>